This is episode number 29 of the Leggett Podcast with myself, Tom Wickstead. Myself, Andy Grant, and this week we have Chris Cairns. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, yeah. Good. good. <laughs> so, the other week, me and Tom were saying we're always getting guests on and stuff, and I said, so I love the Joe Rogan podcast, and obviously he's a comedian, and he always has his comedian friends on. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the time, there's, I mean, there's never any agenda for most of our podcasts, it's just a chat anyway, but I was like, we need to get more comedians on just because they're funny people oh, and it's just okay, that yeah. kind of general chat. And I was like, um, so we kind of said that we didn't like make a plan, but I was yeah. like, it's just it's, it's just great how the Joe Rogan podcast, all his comedy mates and stuff. And then obviously, got some big comedy mates as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he getting the jumps in. Does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> I'm not going to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. Well, you never know. We were saying then, just before we started recording, you're kind of thinking who, who you kind of mates are and stuff. And I've kind of been kind of like Twitter friends for a few years, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, my I first seen you years ago, like like proper years ago. And the reason I remember you so much was because and I know disrespect to any of the acts that like, were on that night, but you were the funniest person, the funniest act, and you were the um, the compa, the MC, the yeah. MC. And ever since then, I think I must have followed you. Then this was years ago. And then obviously, yeah, we've just had a bit of back and forth on Twitter yeah, and stuff yeah, and that. Yeah. And, but um, I thought it's quite funny actually. Is that when you when you do MC a gig, people it's kind of a bit of a comedy trope really. People come up to you and go. Oh, you were like you were really good. You should be like one of the comedians. You should do comedy. I go. Yeah, do you think? Yeah, do you think? Do you think I should go on stage and say funny things? You know, and just because you're the MC, people think you're not really part of the night. They just think you just because you're the MC or like the, the, the guy who brings the people on. You should have a go. I was thinking. Do you think? Yeah, do you think you should have a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking that's a, that's a, that's what a lot of MCs get really because you find that most MCs are quite strong because uh, you can't you don't want that. If you've got a bad MC, you've got like a bad night. Mm. Uh, if you've got someone who doesn't really know what they're doing. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta give people faith in the night yeah. that you're gonna go on. You kind of set the tone and then bring people on and kind of lead. That's why people always think that you're kind of like the best on the night because you get them right really high and then you leave them wanting more than you bring someone on. You can go on and do 25 minutes and then bring someone on and then the person goes on and can struggle after you because mm. you've got to know when to get off. Uh, uh, as an yeah, MC, yeah, yeah. if you really wanted to, there's not a worse you go like you go somewhere and, and like you always want to come like everyone to be on the night to be like a, a good act. But sometimes you get MCs doing like you know 25, 30 minutes. So by the time you get on, people are tired, people mm. are knackered already. They want to go for a wee. The, <laughs> the pint's gone, you know. Mm. So now you're, you're stopping them. The person who's on is stopping. They're stopping them from getting another pint. So you, you, it's all about like time and really getting them on. So that they're, they're at a extra crescendo, and then you bring the mm. act on. And uh, that's why people. I think people often think, "Oh, you're you're the best one, really," because you, you've left and gonna go. I've not go, but yeah. then you, you get it, so it's nice for the next person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 100%. kind of like a, it's a bit of a like a, a selfless role, really. Uh, I remember Joe, uh, Bobby Firmino. It's like Bobby Firmino. <laughs> you know, he, he should get more applauded, but he doesn't. But he's 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 the best one on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, not saying I'm I'm the best one on the pitch. I've got no, I haven't got yeah. the teeth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish, you yeah. know, teeth by the mask. I remember um, Jerry Diaz. Um, saying a similar sort of thing, but not, but just worried about who he who he follows. Like there was a big thing about who, for example, like if he'd never want to follow Joe Rogan or like that, you know that like who is that the same sort of thing? Yeah, and like there's, there's a the, lot of people. I mean, especially if you're just doing like a set, you, there's people you just don't want to go after. You know, because you just, because they're just that yeah, they just destroyed it. You know, some people just. I mean, I remember doing a gig years ago in a great club called The Glee, and, and then Lee Evans turned up, just turned up, and said, can I go on and just do 10 minutes? And I was, like, doing, like, I was on in the middle, and I was like, okay, then, eh? and then he went on and just, like, Ugh. did 40 minutes and annihilated. I mean, this is years and years and years ago. Annihilated. Before he was yeah. big? No, well, when no, he was no. massive. When he was yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just, just, just popped on the club. Know, that's what some really famous comedians do, like Jerry Seinfeld and Chris Rock. They'll just turn up at a, like a very famous club and, and then and then they'll go on and then just, they'll, they'll just... And of course, a couple of go. Funny enough, yeah, John, John Bishop's done that. Yeah, John too. Bishop said he's done John, it in... He's, he's done it to us, yeah. He said he's done it in LA as well. Yeah, I'm at sure. At the uh, comedy but, store. Yeah. With but is John doing it in any club, you know, any club's going to go, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. I mean, John's, I remember years, oh, not long ago, a couple of years ago, John phoned me up and the, while I, and after the show was on, I said, what time did you finish? And we were like, we'll finish the 10. And he'd think he'd gone to see some play and he's with his missus and he was just fancy doing a bit. And then we went, we, you want to just turn up? And, and, and the last act was on and I brought the last act on. I didn't even know there was going to be another act on. I just said, as a bonus, <laughs> you haven't paid for this and no one knew. And John turned up and it was great you because know. people, it's like, Paying for it, it's like going to Peter Rutt, you know, you're getting a salad and you go, you can have all this pizza for free. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, it's great when that happens. But I, but again, Lee Evans, like, goes on and then just does 40 minutes and then... If you're following and him. Then I'm, and, yeah. then I'm, and the fella, I'm saying to the fella, 
you still want me to do this? Yeah. You know, I, if this is, it's not, weird. and I, and he said to me, the fact that I the fact that he said to me, just go on and just do 10. I, I, <laughs> and I went on and I got away with it. But yeah. at that point, the audience were decimated. You know, they're all sitting there, that just, this whirlwind of the most, probably one of the best comedians in the world has just been on. Yeah. It's like following Peter North. You know yeah. what I mean? You're not going to do much of a dent, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you're just going to jab away for a bit and walk away. Uh, but that, that's something, there is some people, I mean, there's people like, there's like loads of great comedians like, like Phil Nickel and John. You don't want to go after John. I remember when John started, mm. you know, because I remember seeing, like, I think it was his third or fourth gig and there was a gig in the Magnet when uh, the Raw Ride used to be there. So it's like, must be like, must be like 16, 17 years ago and he was supposed to do 10 minutes and he was an open spot then. He was still had the job and he's still doing a bit and I remember he just, he went on the 20, ripped it, and then he'd come off on it, and he'd go, do you think I should carry on? I was like, yeah, you really should. Um, he was still kind of like that? Yeah, he, he was on an and like, he's only done about three or four gigs, and he was asking me, I mean, I, I, I don't even go on about a year or so myself, but I, it's just like, it's like watching, you know, like Stephen Gerrard as a kid, you yeah. just tell straight yeah, yeah. away, you know, they've got it, you know, and he, and he just had it in, in spades, but there's people you just, it was so good, especially musical acts, you get like these people who just bang out these like musical acts are notoriously hard to follow because people are all like <laughs> what's, what's the guy yeah, is it Steve Gribble is he? It's Gribble yeah Gribble. Steve Gribble, he's yeah, funny yeah. Yeah, he's brains. I mean he's, he's another one again you don't want to go after Steve because especially people who do music it's hard to follow musical acts yeah. because you, you've got to bring them back down to earth and they've just been clapping along to this happy you know um, not to do a comedy but I, I had an experience in the motivational speaking that I do um, not big and blow my own trumpet or nothing but like I'm I can back myself you know I'm quite good at mm. what I do and um, this company got me in to do a talk and they had me on I normally go on to kick off the day or to end the day and they had me on kind of midday and I was immediately followed there wasn't a break after it it was just immediately followed by someone else and I said to them um, it's quite an impactful powerful emotive presentation they were like no it's fine you know we've got a cram day and they go in here and it'll be fine and all that and I've done this talk you know, standing ovation, people have been crying and like laughing and it, every roller coaster of emotions. And this poor guy had to get off, get up after me, and talk through like the sales of last year and the percentages <laughs> on where they got to go. And I had to sit in it as well. I had to fucking sit in and watch this before I could go because it was a big, massive auditorium and you just I couldn't go anyway. And I could just see him dying a slow, yeah. painful death for the next hour because no one was fucking remotely interested yeah. in what yeah. they had to do next and. He kind of made the joke and was like, "Oh, don't know, I'm gonna follow that." And but it was, I was fucking bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so bad. It's 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 when people are oblivious to the fact that there should be a break. There needs to be something to split this up. Putting yeah. them on after you, yeah. after doing your thing, was just it was fucking advised. mean. <laughs> yeah. you know, I remember doing one for I did one for like Subway years ago. It was in like the Echo, not the Echo Arena, they had the conference center, and they booked me to do this thing. It was like a really good pay, and they go, "We'll do this, and we'll just do half an hour." And I was like, "Okay," and so we've got a presentation on. And then the other be you. I said, "Well, do you want to have an interval?" I said, "Oh, the presentation will be about twenty minutes." And she did a few slides and stuff. And I was like, "You sure do you don't want an interval?" And this place was massive. There must have been a you know a couple of thousand people in there, all the tables. And like, and then the woman went on to this presentation. It was all like sale and stuff. And then they started talking about like the charity, which is some kind of a heart disease charity. And then did this like thirty minute like slides of like disease lungs and hearts I'm like that going <laughs> I've got to try go on now and, and get everyone up yeah. and it, but it lasted about like it was nearly an hour oh. and I was saying to the fella I said do you want to just do a quick break because people are not going to yeah. stay for this mm. and then as soon as I went on they all went to the comedian they all just went whoosh and really? they just literally to a man there must have been seven people left in there because one they all needed the wee yeah. and two they all needed the drink and I was thinking I wouldn't sit there and listen either because yeah. I've been sitting I've, I've been sitting here because like, these are the people that was like their MD yeah. They've got to sit yeah. to this. They haven't got to sit to yeah, Billy yeah. Nobbed here. You know, he's going to stand there and go, oh, no, everyone, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Jokes about purple acne. Um, <laughs> they don't know who that is. He doesn't even shop or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, but I, I remember just, and I just thought, I'm just going to do my act to the, the seven people who were listening who weren't, uh, just because I thought, I want to get paid. Yeah. You know, and but people just don't realise yeah. there needs to be a break With, with those corporate gigs, is it, like, is it more, do you have a set, Set set out as such, or is yeah. it more improvisation that pulls into? Those, or like I, I I find those when you've got to have a a, 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 a a a script as it were, just because especially the, the usually in these horrible places that aren't set up for it. I mean, especially that was like a, a hangar essentially. You don't want to interact with people who are 
50 yards away yeah when you, you, you come to this like the slaughterhouse and they're, they're right there they're mm. right in front of you you can talk to everyone everyone can see you talking to everyone that's there uh, but when you've got like, these like massive places or you know people who ask you to do and sometimes you you know yourself when you go to some places you think why, why mm. are we in this venue this venue is, yeah. is, is, is horrendous uh, but when it's when you can talk to them you can but you're always ready to you know ad lib things but yeah, yeah. you don't really I find that when you get like a corporate thing and it is in some way weird that you wouldn't really expect it to be. You mm. just do your set and get off. Yeah, because I can imagine those corporate stuff is like if you go to a, a comedy club, you're there, you're there because you know. Yeah, and, and generally, I imagine there's a certain age group, and you're there because you, you're there to be entertained. Mm. Whereas for corporate stuff, you've got everyone from I don't know an 18 year old who's just started the company all the way through to you know maybe you know Suzanne who's in accounts who's mm. been there for you know 50 years, and it's like a like to try and cover all those yeah, ages. I, I, I always find that when you've got like those corporate things there's always someone because of like a hierarchy of people you know if someone shouts out and it's like someone quite high up the the, <laughs> the, the and if you batter them you know verbally everyone's kind of going yeah you can't say that to Derek you know <laughs> and he's, the, he's the office knobhead but he's yeah. got power as well he's the boss's son and I'm not going I don't care who he is you know if you you know, don't start on, they won't be on, but I don't care who you are. It doesn't mean nothing to me, you know, yeah. and I, I've seen that before when like, we've done like, you know, the, the really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like they go and they're chipping in and they're used to people laughing when it wasn't funny, yeah. you know, but, and then, and then you're battered and then you see people trying to not laugh, but they're laughing anyway. You can see people think, I've probably got people's jobs here, yeah. uh, <laughs> but they, cause, cause you, you're, you know, he's not charging me. No one's in charge of me. You know, I can say what I want, yeah. you know, within, with, with reason. Uh, but I quite I quite like that when you get someone. I've seen many of like a MD get destroyed because the people that booked go comedians will say anything and they'll mm. win. Yeah. You might think you're funny in work because you're in charge and these people are going to laugh at everything yeah, anyway, that's a good point, even yeah. if it's not funny. Yeah. Uh, but when there's comedians on, I always think, why would you ever pick a fight with a comedian? They yeah. got that. They got that false sense of of security. Yeah, going yeah. well, every time I've said something, everyone laughs and thinks I'm boss, and then all of a sudden you're not. <laughs> you know, there's always a bigger fish, isn't there? Yeah, there's always yeah, a bigger yeah. fish. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I just think we go in the comedy. I mean, I go all the time, and I just think it's one of the best nights out you can do, especially oh, yeah. on like a first date as well and stuff, yeah. and like you know early <clears> dating, <throat> and it's just so. Well, saying that, that there was a, there was a guy in last week with, a, with his, wait, I say his missus. It was his first date on a Tinder date. Really? But he made a point of telling people that it was. It was a Tinder date and the girl looked well pissed off, A, that he'd blown them up. Yeah. And I was like, how's it going on? She's gone. And she was like playing out of breath. <laughs> and he was sitting there and like this like this like Biggles type flying jacket on. And when, when it was really hot about you know about two weeks ago. Yeah. And he's sitting there sweating like, you know, Prince Andrew last week. Um <laughs> <laughs> bit cooler now. Uh, but he was he told her and I, and I said, How's you getting on? And she went, You used a filter. <laughs> so that was she said, yeah. yeah. She went, she, she said dead fan. She went, he used a filter <laughs> I was like well that's Tinder for you for one but I was thinking well, why are you using it? he's a bloke he's sitting there with like kidney ears and all heart around his face uh, I was like I, know. but I, I don't think I, I don't think it went well at all for him but he's he made the point of I mean yeah. I think dates are great but don't tell people no that you're uh, I, I got I got um, I was in um, it was which, which one was it um, hot water I think it was um, about a year ago and I was like in the second row and the, and the, the MC said something like oh you know Start asking questions, and he said, "Oh, what do you do?" And I just said, oh, "I do public speaking." And you think well, they can't really say too much from that. And then straight away, he was like, "What do you mean? Like you just like a town crier just standing there going here, there, here, there?" And like he just fucking had me straight yeah. away. It's just so fucking funny. You showed me your legs, that shut them all. And well, I did. I, he said, <laughs> "He said, what, what do you speak about?" And I said, "Oh, I said I was in the Marines, got blown up, and I do motivational speaking." And he went. Fucking hell, that's what yeah. I yeah, that's it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, there's always someone you say to people and you go, oh, what do you do? And you go, teach it. And they go, yeah. I teach disabled children. And you go, yeah, okay, <laughs> you're fine. In fact, if you're watching this now, if you ever get picked on by a comedian, just say you teach or like you're a carer for disabled children yeah, yeah, or something. And yeah, they go, yeah. okay, you're safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the but, safest job that, in the world. That, like, again, mate, and I was just as well, I was, I was looking at some of your YouTube stuff and one thing, because it was again, it was a few months since I last seen you. One thing that impressed me so much about you is how quick you are. Like, there was one clip I watched before. I was telling Tom it's, it's on YouTube, and you're talking about you're telling a joke about uh, finding Nemo. Oh yeah, I've got to, I've and not and many the, clips of mine. I don't really watch. I hate watching myself. So and I the, mo really the mobile phone goes off, and just straight away in a minute, and you can say that when the kids are the mobile, and it's so quick, like. 
I, I think it's just. I think the more you do it, I think it's just. There's not really many situations that haven't happened before, mm. so you've always kind of got that reserve of things. I mean, it's not really. It's, I mean, that's what I always mention. Often you see people who, who, who give stick to comedians um, about a thing that's very obvious about them. Like if you got red hair, you're bald, and it's like they've heard this a thousand times. If I go down south to when you shout out, I'm like, some kind of thief or something. I'm ready for this. This yeah. has happened. This is not day one. You're not going <laughs> to flummox me now. Yeah. And, and uh, any comedian, like, you know, women comedians or like, you know, there's something quite, you know, different about them. Like, you know, like obvious things. You're saying things about like, and I think, say something funnier. Say something better. Yeah. Than th- that's what people, are, oh, bo- bo- boggles my mind. I think, say something new. Because y- some people are glaringly obvious, like mm. they've got something about them. You think no one shouted that out before? And they sit there going, oh, you thieving scouse get to go, really? Yeah, this is yeah. the oldest trope in the book, you know? And you sit and look around going, tell you what, Oscar Wilde, you know, that that's me, and, <laughs> and you're not, you know? So it's... Uh, I I, mean, I have it the same with me legs. I, you know, when you kind of get, maybe at a, a corporate gig or something, and after the, after the thing, you're having a, a few drinks with them at the bar, and they're kind of a bit comfortable, and they'll say something about the leg, which is fine. I'm, I'm completely fine with it. people having a joke and saying a piss about the leg, but it's like, say something good. Yeah. Like, don't be like, oh, you know, you're getting legless tonight, Andy. Oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. mate, come on. <laughs> like, at but you least... get the same questions as well, don't you? Yeah, and that's fine. You know, yeah, people question, are interested yeah, in yeah. stuff, but, and but when people are going to have a joke and stuff, it's like, come on, at least either go fucking balls deep on me and like give me loads of shit, or just don't be like saying mm. a little bit the same, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's when it's, people kind of tiptoe around. That's things. what it, that's that's what it feels like. Yeah. People are t- oh, you know, getting, getting legless tonight, Dan. <laughs> yeah. just, fuck off, mate. Come on. Yeah, just, just just either fucking say, don't know, just take me leg off and beat me with it or something <laughs> instead. Yeah, yeah. Take, yeah, run that. away with it. Yeah. How come? Do, do you stay away from? Do you, do you record any of any of your sets and listen to them back at all? Uh, no, I like, hate watching myself and I hate listening to myself. Yeah, I, I hate my own voice. And uh, even listening back to you, did you ever? Did you ever do that at the start, like record and at then... At the start, just... I had a, going, going way back, I had a little dictaphone uh, and I used to record certain things just to see what worked, really. Yeah. Uh, but I can't stand listening to my own voice. Really? Or watching myself. I never watch anything that I do. Do you not know? Is that not... Because um, I've noticed I don't do Facebook, but I see the odd thing on... I am um, Adam Rowe used it, has used it really well. It's the Hot Water Club, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, they film everything, so they seem... Do you not think that... Is that then? Were you just saying that then? There's not much many clips of you. Do you not feel like? I think if I, had, if I had ambition, I'd be bothered. But I'm not that bothered. You know what I mean? I've had some kind of like the, the people who do film themselves doing everything and put themselves out there. Are genuinely, I mean, fair play to them. They've got like you know more ambition than I have. Mm. Um, but all I wanted to do was just do what I. That was my my um, my drive was to not have a proper job and do this, and I fell into this by mistake, by accident. So. Uh, I'm not that bothered about like because uh, there's, there's a woman a, a mate of my mum's I haven't seen for years uh, and I've seen her in like Tesco the other day and she's going ah oh, Chris you're going to like be on the telly soon you know you're not getting any younger and I was like cheers love <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking well because I'm not that bothered about where I am I'm, I'm happy where I am because all I wanted to do is do this living I always th- I've always said this if you can do something you like and get paid for it. It's not really a job. Never and work a day in your life. Yeah, yeah, you won't. Yeah. And then, it, and I was thinking, there's a, I was watching the comedians in cars with co- getting coffee, and Jerry Seinfeld talking to Eddie Murphy. He was massive and stuff, and he was just saying, "If you make people laugh for a living, you you've won. You, mm. You're winning. You know, and that's all I ever wanted to do. If I wasn't a comedian, I'd still be trying to make people laugh because mm. it's, it's just always what it's it's what I wanted. I've always wanted it's to just do. In I'll you. do. I do it, it within a room of strangers. You know, I'll, I'll still try and have a laugh at people. Getting making people laugh is the best thing in the world mm. you can do. You yeah, know, it's, not, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a real drive to make people laugh, and it can get you in a lot of trouble because you <laughs> just say things that you know. That, um, it's really refreshing that though in a world where everyone seems to be striving for the money and for the fame and for the success of what they deem to be success, yeah. it's nice to just uh, yeah. Well, now like we've got like me. We run like laughter house, so like my wife runs that. She books it, uh, and I'm there like almost every other week doing it. And then I can I can keep myself busy with doing what else I'm doing and stuff. And I don't need to like kind of like not that I don't strive to be better than stuff, but I, I'm I'm home a lot. You know, I've got mm. my little daughter has been well for a couple of years. I can look after her, um, and it's it, it hasn't really been that big a deal for me because before I was doing this, I've only had terrible jobs. 
being rubbish, like mind numbing jobs. <laughs> and I always find them with you get certain comedians at like Christmas going, Oh my Christmas is people are pissed and this is gonna be hard, I think. For a couple of weeks it's a bit tougher than usual and people mm. might listen to you like the like they should, but a lot of them have been dragged here. You know, you're getting more money. Like works, Christmas. nice out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff. And I always think, <clears throat> you're not in Mackey's, mate. Yeah. You're not in a on a motorway at six o'clock in the morning, you know, digging holes and stuff. Just You always tell comedians who've never really had shit jobs, uh, never really appreciate how good we've got it. Yeah. Uh, because nine times out of ten, probably 99% of the time, it's nice. Mm. You know, it's, it's a nice job. I like it. I mean, when it's bad, it's horrendous. Mm. It's one of those things. It's such a contrast. When it's bad, it's like, I remember the first death I is ever it, had. I remember thinking, "Oh my god, this is this this is the stuff of nightmares." And you think your brain would have to get out, uh, but that is. What is in when you bomb and you just yeah start. yeah yeah. And I remember like I think I did about like eight nine gigs and ripped them all, and then I remember going to that gig in Sheffield and I remember just going, "Hey, we go really big bollocks," and just getting <laughs> such a kick up the arse. You stand there going, "I'm going with this bit going. I need <laughs> this to talk," uh, and your brain your brain decides to not give you any more material and. You, you, why, why do you, I need really needed spit at that moment? I'm oh, going. Hey, I'm, I stand there. You stand there going, going up there. I'm like, I can't talk. Why would? Oh, why? What mate. kind of? You know, evolutionary standpoint is the time I really needed to talk. But you learn a lot more from that. You know, you need to. Just thinking about time. it though, it's making my stomach like. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you. You know, you've had times where you, you, yeah. you think that it hasn't but, gone. As, but with as well. the comedy though, mate, I I do want to get into comedy, right? Just to kind of try it once because I, I love that kind of feeling of stepping outside your comfort zone and. Yeah. That feeling of just like, bombing. Oh, yeah, just it's something that excites me. Not about bombing, but just that feeling of like, it's it's good. I think good comedians really are, are always uh, aware of it. You've got to be aware that you only have one joke away from bombing. Mm. It happened even like like twenty minutes set and get to like fifteen minutes. You said something and it's like you've reset to the beginning and now they hate you. You know, I've talked me into into bad gigs. You know, I mean, I'm quite lucky. I think in the, I've been doing it for near twenty years, and I think I've I probably had about like ten horrendous bombs where I sometimes feel some people go, oh man, I'm on my 10th worst gig. <laughs> I'm like, really? What are you doing? Yeah. Not bad. Uh, say something funnier. Uh, do you ever, do you ever, because I, if, I, after those six, seven gigs or whatever, and then you and Sheffield, weren't you, and you, and you yeah. bombed then, did you ever, did you think when you're driving home, because I imagine it can be quite lonely when you're driving home going, ah, I don't, like, I don't know if this is right. Yeah, well, like, I think that's, the, I think that's the, 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 the grade really. I think you get a hundred, open spots like say people who've never done comedy before and you, you in a year they might do like you know, maybe 20 30 gigs if you look again in a year they'll be they'll be 40 because they've all had like those gigs and then in two years they'll be 20 and i reckon after about like four or five years they'll be four you know because the people really, just have yeah. those gigs i reckon there must be because the loads of people have a go and then just go just no, res- again. no resilience you, no. you just got you just got to go because it, it is brutal you know and, it, and it, you just think jesus christ that was the worst thing i've ever done you know, ever you know to stand mm. there to get stared at, and even oh. get stared at sometimes. You know, it's it's you know it's worse when they just start chatting <clears throat> amongst themselves, yeah. and you're not even there anymore. You're just like mm. a ghost, and you just oh. at least I'd rather get shit off people. You know, I'd soon I've argued my way into good gigs because you know they've hated you from the beginning for like no reason or, or like geography or whatever. Uh, but you, I, I think it's those ones you go well. I'm not doing that. Uh, you know, maybe they've yeah. got a good job. Maybe for me, it was like. I need to get out of the job that I'm in now, and this is so what going was, okay. What, from, from the start then, Chris, what was your kind of growing up and you got, what, got your into it and stuff then, and through school and job-wise no, and stuff? Yeah, I just, you know, did all right, average in school, not great academically, uh, struggled with like just stupid things like maths and stuff, so I never really had like any kind of office work and stuff, and then uh, I was working in Forbidden Planet, you know, the comic shop on Ball Street, so oh, yeah. sci-fi stuff, and me and the lad who worked there and a few of us just went to the place in... in Sandy, you know, the Sandy Bar on Seal Street. Yeah. They used to have like a comedy night on theirs and like over 20 years ago now. And we just went there. And we went there and seen like, you know, like Dara O'Brien and Peter Kay and Johnny Vegas and Frankie Boyle, you know, when they were just jobbing acts, mm. you know, when they were just like, just, and we just seen like, it's like the, it's like the cavern of like, of comedy really. We yeah. just seen like mm. these like massive acts uh, come and go. And then we just, that's how I, that's how we got into it. Just me and my mate. He doesn't do it anymore, sadly, because he's shame because he's really funny. Uh, and the fella, we used to just get picked on, as like as we sat in the front row, and we used to get picked on, and then we used to just say stuff back, and and win a lot of the time. And then the guy who ran it said, "Oh shit, you should have a go." 
And we said, okay, we'll have a go. And I only wanted to do it to say that I've, I've done it once. <coughs> like you knew, saying, I just want to do it once just to say that I've done it. Because people would come and go and they'd be good or bad or whatever. And you think, well, I just want to see what it's like. You know, because mm. just, just, people would people go, well, at least they're up there. You yeah. know, and, I, and it's tough. Uh, and I just thought, I'll just do it once and I'll never do it again. And then we did one. I said, like, give us a month and we'll go away. And we just wrote what we thought was funny at the time. Uh, we went away and came back. And then I did one and it went really well. I'm thinking, I'll do another one. <laughs> and just to, just to say, and I just started doing bits and bobs. And the next time someone else come, what do you want to come do it here? And I go, okay. Uh, and then the next thing you go, it's, it's 20 quid. I'm like, 20 quid? <laughs> I was like, 20 <laughs> quid? I've only talked for 10 minutes. And how old was you when this was going on? I was 25 then. So it was like yeah. 20 years ago. When, uh, 25, I did my first one. Um, and I was only like I don't know I was only doing like security work and stuff and working in retail things and I've mm. had, like rubbish like kind of labouring jobs and stuff. But I'm thinking you can get paid for doing this, and I thought I'll just keep doing it until I started getting <coughs> more and more and stuff. So it's that light bulb moment. It was the same with me and the speaking, and we've had a few guests on who have done things, and it's like when you do something because you enjoy it. Yeah, it is almost like a light bulb moment when you kind of doing it because you're purely for the fun of it, and then that one day the kind of the financial reward comes and you're like. Yeah. What? You can fucking give me money for doing <laughs> what I love doing. For... Fucking perfect. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what we've like. My little girl's like she's fifteen now. She's fifteen on Tuesday, and when my missus was pregnant, she was just like, I don't really want to. She's working like she's all, all kinds of different jobs and stuff. But she, that's how we got into like just doing comedy ourselves because she thought, well, like she said, she thinks comedians are like an asset. You know, to, to be sold, you can sell them. And she started managing comedians uh, for a good few years until we we took over like the. The slaughter house, that's laughter house, and now she she books all the acts and stuff, and she books like events and like the Philharmonic and stuff. Uh, so we're both self-employed, you know, and she and it, it's all stemmed from like me doing it, and then it kind of like bleeding into our own lives mm. uh, with us now. So now I'm 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 as happy as a lamb because I've basically got my own club that I get to MC in or do sets in, uh, get to do like the like the Philharmonic hall and stuff, and I still get to like travel around and stuff, and you know when I want I can get to do the gigs that I want now rather than have to like always kind of like foraging for gigs and mm. stuff which is during the start like just on that point during the start did you have to make friends you have to real make really make friends with the bookers or whoever owns a club and like try and get into it or is it or is there a bit of a circuit that you kind of get passed around as such no you like just gotta like it's like any you just gotta like work for free for a long time until <laughs> it's like open spot you just gotta yeah, go yeah. to places I mean luckily there's a lot of places where you could just go and do like 10 minutes or 5 minutes and then if they like you they go we'll come back I think a lot of people kind of places kind of test you out to see how many times you'll come back you know if you go it's good come back again in like six months and do 10 minutes come back and again and uh, i mean there's clubs that i had to go back like you know four or five times until i got to the point but they i think once you show a bit of will and, and you're good enough obviously uh, but it's not, you don't have to be friendly you just have to be as friendly as you are in life you're not mm. naturally mean to people are you but yeah, i think yeah, yeah. if you are a nice person you will i mean there's people who you know like my wife just goes you know what i've seen a book someone who is less good it was less of a knobhead when they turn up because there's no hassle. Mm. You know, it's like any, any, you know, it doesn't matter if you're working boots, you know, or, or yeah, like, you know, you know, Halfords, you know, there's going to be 20 of you and there's going to be like some knobheads you don't yeah. get on with. Mm. Uh, but I think you just got to be as nice as you are. I mean, I've never tried to be an issue anywhere I've gone. You go in, you're nice to everyone because you don't try to be nice. You're just nice because you're hopefully a nice bloke, mm. do the business and then just get off. Mm. And then the people go, well, comes in, professional gets off yeah. you haven't got to like brand knows anyone it's just the case but it doesn't help it doesn't do any harm to you know because people will help you out and you know put a word in for you and stuff people must phone me up and go can you put a word in for blah blah and i go okay because a they're good enough and b they're really nice people so yeah. it is a case of what sometimes it is who well, you know yeah I suppose yeah. if you're good enough as well but if you're good then. enough yeah i'm not just going <coughs> if someone's like half decent and they phone me can you, can you book me in your place i go you're not really can't really because you're lovely both but you're not at that level yet yeah you know maybe you will be and stuff yeah, yeah it, it, it pissed me off a little bit when i was doing the speaking and i started getting like the big corporate jobs overseas and stuff and then some people had like messaged me and stuff like which i got no i give help out to anyone and advise anyone but I, it, I remember it did piss me off a little bit the first time it happened when people kind of assumed that like yeah. i've just it just fucking that like happened and yeah. no one seen like you said i fucking remember speaking in an old church for like four old women yeah I think one of them was probably dead or on a way <laughs> and like just <clears throat> fucking in the right place. Yeah. Just mastering yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I remember, talking, I remember, yeah, I remember talking, yeah, I remember being on a comedy a couple of years ago and having a drink with like the staff, I think it was kicking Newcastle years ago and they were moaning how much, because they kind of got onto the fact that how much comedians were getting and how little we had to do for it. 
and I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you just do like 20 minutes and then you, you, we're here till like from like seven o'clock till, you know, three Midnight in the morning. morning yeah. And I go, I said, well, you can do that. Mm. If you want, I said, I've had your job. I've done, but I, I was working yeah, in the and I was like 14, 15. I worked in town for like, I was a glassy in Obama when I was like, when I was like 14, 15. I used to work like, you know, like from seven till two in the morning when I was like 14, 15 in plumbers at the time. I was going back a there. And I was saying, I said, but when you started this job as a bar person or whatever, you got paid from day one to now. I said, I had to do this for years mm. before I got anything. Yeah. And you're not paying for me to turn off for 20 minutes or half an hour or to MC a night. I said, you're paying for me for how good I am mm. now because I got good. And yeah, then I got you're paying for those 10 yeah. years. Yeah, you're, you're, not, yeah, you're paying yeah. for it. With all comedians, <clears throat> with anyone like yourself, you know what I mean? You're not paying for the fact that you just turned up and you did like a talk for half an hour or 40 minutes or an hour. You're paying for the fact that I got that good and now you're paying for that. Yeah. the experience you know I'm sure when Jimmy Carr started you didn't get like you know you got nothing but Jimmy Carr Jimmy Carr now and you're paying for yeah. you know 20 years worth of experience and how good he is mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't pay for 20 minutes you pay for what went into that 20 minutes totally, yeah. you know the we good and bad to get into we spoke about this before didn't we when yeah we did yeah, some, yeah. Um, some woman from the um, I think it was the police wanted me to come and do some work and I said I'll I charge you what a, what a charge for the um, the fire brigade I do a lot of work for Cheshire Fire Brigade gave them the price and she went, um, what, that's, that's your hourly rate? I said, well, come in, do this and, and all that. And she went, oh, that's too much. I, got, I wish I got paid to do um, what you what you done. I went, I just fucking went off. I must have had a bad day. And I went, well, when you've fucking been through what I've been through and yeah. turned it round and done this and then you've worked hard and you've, like you said, you spoke for free yeah, and you've done all yeah, that. That's it. You know what? Do you know what, what's happened to me for me yeah. to get to this point? <laughs> I didn't you know just I mean? fucking turn up one day and go, I'll come and speak to you and I want to get paid this much. And But yeah, I'm a bit, but, but what's nice as well, and I... I guess I try and see the positive in most things and what you're doing is positive, the fact that you enjoy it. I love that feeling of just, I fucking don't want to be, I love how honest you are, like I don't want to be fucking doing a job like this for the rest of my life, I want to do mm. something that, and I think that is massively inspirational, but it, it's also a big, um, there's that there's a big fear in doing that, isn't there? I think a lot of people through, through just life getting in the way and as you get older and responsibilities then start yeah. piling on and you have kids and mm. mortgages and rents and bills, it's harder to kind of have that that kind of way you've went, fuck this, I don't want to work doing this for the rest of my life. I want to go and follow my passion yeah. and hopefully that leads to money. Well, you know, I mean, it wasn't that hard for me really because I did have such rubbish jobs and I was thinking I didn't have that much to lose. But again, when you speak to like the likes of Bish, he had like a really good job. Yeah. You know, he was well paid, he was comfortable, put out great pensions and stuff. And, and I, he, I remember he was saying, like, do you think I should do it? And I was like, well, you, you should, because he, he was clearly excellent. But I'm, I'm more impressed with someone like that going, well, if I had all that and I had a great job, I probably wouldn't have been that. Took the job. You know, yeah. he, 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 I, mean, they, I mean, they were basically saying to him, listen, you know, because it started getting in the way of his job. He said, well, it's up to you now. Do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And he thought, well, he jumped, mm. you know, and a fair play to him, he was good enough to, you know, Mm. to get that way yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just love that attitude though mate like and it's I seen something on Twitter actually the other day and it was um, it was Paul Smith the boxer was uh, having having an argument with someone and someone said something the harder you work the um, the luckier you yeah. the, the, the more yeah, yeah that's a good yeah. I like that saying yeah <laughs> famous golfer said that didn't he yeah, they are the, the more, the the more I practice yeah. something the luckier I get yeah. now this guy basically said which I thought was a fucking idiot thing to say and he said something like the harder you work the, the better you are financially I said, that's a fucking load of shit. I said, I remember being in the Marines working fucking 18 hours a day in, on patrol in Afghanistan. Mm. On fucking, I think I was getting paid about like 1,100 quid a month. Yeah. So I've, I've done, I've done a, a speaking gig for 40 minutes. That's paid fucking triple that sometimes, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it, it's it's all about working yeah, smarter. I, I, remember, than, I remember doing like, like troop gigs years ago and I'm like, and they're going, oh, mate, unbelievable. How you get up there? And you go... Really? And then they go, what do you do? They go, yeah, I'm a, I do bomb disposal. I'm the guy, in fact, I'm not even the guy who does bomb, I'm like the guy who just finds them and then gets the bomb. It's like, so you're yeah. just a fucking hamster, really. You're just like some kind of like, <laughs> fairly confined bumps in a row. And I was going, and he's like, you're impressed by me talking about wanking for 20 minutes. And he's going, oh, I couldn't do your job, mate. So I was like, what do you do again? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it is, it know, is the, the and disposal. Yeah. So <laughs> The fear in public speaking, though, is I didn't realise myself until I, you know, I enjoy it and it, it comes natural to me, but... I didn't realise there is a big fear of getting up on stage oh, for a lot of people, 100%, isn't it? Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. But you I, weren't like you weren't like that. Were you chitting one at the start? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, what about even now? Like, do you, do you think because you've got everything? I imagine you have got everything mapped out, and you've got these rebuttals to what people might, and you've got this like tool bag of things that you can. Surely, when you go on now, you just like 
piece of cake, no problem. Yeah, when I'm in art, when I'm in the laughter house, I'm I'm kind of bulletproof early because I'm it's like playing at home, it's like playing at Anfield. I know mm. what's going to be like and, and everything's going to be fine. But at the beginning, oh my god, I remember just standing outside because it was in the Zandy bar. I just stand outside thinking, I'm just gonna go. I was, I mean, I was the next act. Ugh. It was, the, I was the middle bit, and I was just standing going, I and but look, I stupidly told everyone in the world that I was doing it. Uh, and then they all came. I was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> this could be awful." You think most most people just don't tell anyone, then just do it. And then yeah. no matter how it goes, the guy around the club was like, oh, "This place is booming." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <I'm> just <laughs> just, so I told all my mates, and then, then they all turned up. Uh, but I remember thinking to myself, "I can't do this," and you get like that kind of like palpitations and stuff. And I still feel get like kind of get that little jolt, regardless if it's our place and stuff. But uh, I remember at the time I, got, I couldn't have ate before, like like. Mm. In the afternoon, if the gig were us now, I could eat a roast and then just <laughs> cartwheel on. Uh, but but you'd be, I think when you get to that point where you just don't care anymore, you, you, you lose yeah. something. You've got to be at that kind of like yeah. that level of. You are dangerous when you've got nothing to lose as well, yeah. aren't you? In yeah. terms of you just completely risk free yeah. to some extent. Yeah, and you can always see that sometimes, but you see like people who just kind of like phone it in and they're not that bothered anymore. You can just see they've kind of lost a step because they're not that bothered about it, but good or bad. It's, they're going to get paid and you can always tell the people who just sell it every time because you know, they've got that fear of mm. like you know mm. you get a lot, of, a lot of comedians you go oh my god they're just the most the most amazing people and they're clearly so outwardly like rambunctious and stuff and then you speak to them on stage and they're really quite inwardly like kind of insecure and it's, it's such like an outlet for them mm. uh, there's loads of comedians who just you just wouldn't think really? just when you see their act yeah and you think you are nothing like uh, what you like off stage bloody hell yeah so I suppose it is an act, though, isn't it? In a, in a sense, unless yeah. obviously there's some people who are naturally very funny. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I just try and go on, and because I've got nothing else, I can't pretend to be something. I just go on and just try and be as affable as I can, and just chat to everyone and stuff. And uh, but there is some people who just the way that they are. They are like John. And John's very much like that, you know. Mm. And Neil, you know, Fitty is very much like the way Fitty is. He's funny off and on stage. Mm. Because uh, there's loads of comedians who are just not funny off stage. You think I don't I've heard someone say that. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are just like not funny at all. You think. I don't know how you got into comedy, never mind. But then they go on and then they're just in- incredible acts. Uh, but that's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I think <laughs> sometimes as well with, with the speaking that I do, sometimes again, you, I don't, I don't think. It, hopefully, I've, I've never done this, but you can maybe feel oh, I can't really be bothered doing this gig or whatever. But then you forget that people are coming and, and they they want to hear yeah. your story, and you know it's it's on you to be professional that's the thing especially especially any kind of public speaking I mean I've been I remember having like the flu or something like a year or two ago and being like on death's door thinking I can't do this gig and mm-hmm. then you just kind of go on and, and just doing it because you there's something about being on stage you let you off for 20 minutes <laughs> and then you can, you'll just fall <laughs> off stage and think, yeah. but you, again people have come to see it and there's a, that's the thing with comedy <laughs> is that um, I remember like a couple of years ago we were doing a show in the Philharmonic and Jason Manford was supposed to do it and he'd be friend of the young lad who had cancer and he died mm. and he, like literally the day before the gig or two days before the gig and he just had to cancel a, and people just expect and but people moaned like to us going well you know you, you know you, sh- you should have turned up i was like well you can't it's not like working in greg's you know if someone dies next door you think oh dave's dead you know and they, but they, you still go to work the next day and it's not going to affect your work when you do it like yourself you know any kind of public speaking you've still got to sell it no matter what's going on in your life mm-hmm. and there's things going on in people's lives that it's hard to get past yeah. you know to go on and kind of turn that on mate you know? i am um, I, I didn't talk about this stuff for, for a long time but i was Probably looking back, if I went to doctors now, I probably would have got diagnosed for depression and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was, um, I just come out of the Marines and I'd lost my way a bit and I was drinking too much and gambling too much in my relationship with my little girl. His mum was breaking down and it was a tough time, probably one of the toughest times in my life. But for me as a public speaker, and I know mental health spoken about a lot more, I was thinking I can't tell anyone about this because I'm fucking going through mm-hmm. a pretty tough time in my personal yeah. life. But I'm meant to be this motivational speaker, so yeah. I kind of kept it quiet, which I shouldn't have done really. And I remember going into, and I only really opened up about it now, even talking about it, because I put it in, into my book. And I remember doing this um, this gig up in, um, I got banned six months driving as well, so I never had a car. My relationship was breaking down, I'm drinking too much, gambling too much, and my life was going to shit. So I'm getting a taxi to this speaking gig, get on stage, go and do this gig, about five, six hundred people. It was at a, um, a school leavers assembly so it was like kids their parents their grandparents and it's all about look you know go into the world and mm. you know it's not always going to go right but stay positive and all this standing ovation everyone's clapping getting selfies at the end 
And then there's me, ring a taxi, ring a Delta, and I'm like fucking sobbing in the back of the taxi, fucking yeah. going home. And you're like, but then <laughs> you're on stage, and like you say, for that 20 minutes, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. everything's great, and, you, and you're this role model, you're this inspiration. And then I'm fucking getting in the car thinking like, fucking getting bin bagged by my missus when I go home. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, my fucking world was going in, but again, for that, for that 20 minutes, you, you just have to kind of yeah. give you, the people what I mean, they like, wanted. And luckily, nine times out of 10, you can kind of put stuff out your mind and get on with it. Yeah, but it's tough though, it, like you're saying, if, if you've got yeah, stuff going yeah, on like that, it's on, I mean, incredibly t- tough. It's not like I say, me, me, me daughter, she's, she's not kind of, we think like she's kind of on the spectrum, she might be diagnosed like autistic, and she hasn't been to school for like a year now because she's getting, she's getting really bullied uh, and it really affected her mind and like a lot of things are going on and um, she hasn't really been well at all really and she she got bullied to the point where there was kids, te- these phones, there was kids like texting That's her fucking worst thing and uh, she she tried to take an overdose and she was like, 13 then at 14 oh, and then there was other kids texting that after they'd found out that it happened saying try harder Fuck and, I was, and I remember thinking my god I mean we, we, kids are shit you know what I mean kids are, kids are cruel but I remember thinking to myself I'm glad I never had to deal with stuff like that because yeah, I don't think I could have done really whereas now kids have got to deal with those things and then like we had to like, like that happened twice where she tried to like overdose when she'd managed to find things um, and and I remember just being so fucking angry going to a gig one night and I was I just watching the move for the gig and like there was some fella giving me like shit for, for not an innocuous stupid thing you know what not and, and I, I swear to god I, I remember just thinking to myself if he says one more thing I am going to leap into the audience and kill him you know and it was yeah, a point yeah. of like and I was mm. and luckily he shut up and I managed to kind of like bring it back in and I remember thinking to myself and, and again you've just got to, you've still got to go to work mm. and that's just, and, and, and still try and like do that thing but I remember I'm glad he shut up really because I think my career had been over now because I was at that point where I was thinking I can't even pretend mm. <laughs> that like yeah. I'm like this it's it, part of this lovely bloke yeah. you know what I mean and I remember like, having a bit of banter with him and, and then just like shutting him up but I thought and I asked this myself, he says one more fucking thing you know and it would have been like to the audience fucking hell this fella's clearly metal yeah. you know what, what what's going on like you know well, that's it because you just don't know do you and like yeah. I say there's, and there's times when <clears throat> it's times when my past when things and I've just cancelled it and I just went I'm really sorry I can't because I've just knew me I'd just not been in it but you just don't know do you what's going on at, in, mm. when people close the door I no, think absolutely. I said to you the other day I had done a gig in um, for Canon you know the, the camera people and a guy at the end he comes and shakes my hand and he didn't say much but he, he was welled up in his eyes and he just went and he squeezed my hand and he went I really needed that mm-hmm. to hear that right now thank you and I remember thinking like what's wonder what he's going on to yeah. do you know what I mean mm. whether it's and it's it's fucking mad, isn't it? What people kind of bottle yeah, up and, yeah. and have to deal with. Well, I say everyone's going through something, and like I say, you've still got to obviously go out and you do whatever you got to do, so like you know, and live and stuff. But uh, I think that's what people need to realise is that everyone's got something going on, mm. uh, and it is hard sometimes. And that's why you know, obviously now people get a lot more help. Than yeah, what they used to get and stuff. Uh, that's why I think the comedy as well. I seen that they spoke about it on Joe Rogan that they were saying it's such a great time for comedy because in many ways the world's so fucking fucked up at the moment yeah I mean, that, I mean I, I watch like a lot of like, like the late shows Stephen Colbert like and all these things I think if, if you don't talk about them it yeah. just wells up and that's yeah. the, that's yeah, the thing yeah. there's, I mean this thing that I've <clears> talked about on stage that I thought I'd never talk about because uh, it's quite cathartic to go on and Absolutely, you can talk yeah. about like things that have happened to you and you can make I mean there's been horrible things that have happened but I've, I've talked about them on stage and they made, the, made them into like funny stories and again there's like comedy and tragedy there's not much between them uh, but there's loads of people who talk about like horrible things on stage mm. and it, you know it can it can touch people because everyone's going through something i was just about to ask that if 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 a commit would you i've never really got angry at what any comedian said but say if it was something i don't know you mentioned your daughter before but mm. if someone mentioned that just suddenly in a set would you feel an an ounce of yeah like not, bullying or something like, like that if you know if they, if they were joking it's, it's, like, it's, no it's, it's the intention behind it yeah yeah you can, people sometimes people just hear a word and they don't hear nothing else after it you can say like a certain word and then they just they just kind of like triggered into this like god and then they don't hear nothing else mm. at all uh, that's it they've just did and the, the jokes about like domestic violence or you know peter i don't know, like pedophilia and stuff and you think well they're not funny subjects at all but there is you can talk about them and and you know there's a guy called like gary, there's a, there's a, there's a guy called gary delaney he's one of the best comedians you'll ever see and he and he did this joke and he was saying about there was a guy in like the midlands he was like he was a he was the most vilest he, he done he went to prison and he's going he was the most vile uh, he was like a racist pedophile 
So he said, what do you think? How can you make a joke after this? And he went to go, so at least some of the kids were safe. <laughs> um, which is a great joke, you know, which is a great, yeah, yeah, great yeah. joke. Um, oh. it, it's just a brilliant joke. And you think, well, how can you, those joke subjects aren't funny until they are. Yeah, and if yeah. you went on and said, well, like, you know, you know, I, I, I'm a paedophile, I touch kids, you go, hang on, mate, that's not funny. You know, yeah. but if you, can, if you can joke about certain things. It's funny as well, like how, like, you think something that's maybe tragedy for you or like a horrible subject and something you don't want to relive it years later and sometimes it's time as well time and then add a bit of comedy to it and when you're talking to friends about it and you can think you're probably you're probably speaking to the same mate that it was you and them might have went through something tough together and then years later you're just like fucking hell well you know what I always find that you can get away with a lot of things there was like, I mean, like an article a while ago there was a, a stag do in from Newcastle and the guy the, the guy getting married had one arm he just mm. had one arm where he was either born with it or he, something similar that happened so yeah. like, what's happened to you and I was just saying to him I was like, everyone, was bringing the hat I was going everyone clapping to you I was going not you you're okay <laughs> um, and everyone kind of went like that and, like, and he was laughing his head off you know and he was, I was just taking the piss because yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and some people went ooh and I went it hasn't just fucking happened. You know what I mean? It didn't happen outside. You go, fuck no, Dave. Where's your fucking arm? I was like, I was like, I was joking with him. But then someone came up to me who wasn't with their group and said to me, like, oh, I thought you're out of order. I was like, I said, he's not offended. Why are yeah, you offended? Yeah, yeah, and he came yeah. on and he, and he said, are you going to let him say that? And I went, are you trying to start a fight? Because I probably win. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but he was just, and, and the fellas going, He's just joking, and, and, and he went. To be honest with you, said it was good to, that it wasn't kind of tiptoed around yeah. because it went. It was it was obvious because yeah, yeah. he was sitting there. He had like a like a t-shirt on. It was like it was like a shirt on with like it was like a flap and stuff. And I went, to, and we, all night like the people were like joking with him mm-hmm. about it, not being it wasn't cruel. It was just jokes, you know. And it yeah. wasn't there was no intent behind it. But like someone else, I would find people always take offence for someone else. Yeah, yeah. on no, someone else's behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like swear yeah. and stuff. You go, I didn't like the language. I go, well. This isn't see BB's love, you know. You know, <laughs> yeah. people always think, "Oh, I can't believe you you you, you swore." I go, "Well, it's a comedy night, you know." Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of enjoy watching people get appalled because you you always find you'll always watch an audience. You, you'll always find a person who's appalled, mm-hmm. and you'll you, it, or not <laughs> laughing, and you all just see is that one person. It really like kind of like focalizes to like one person. I go, "Why aren't you laughing?" Yeah, I, I love to see that. Watching people get truly appalled yeah. is is fantastic. You know, I, 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 not, not like I think it was he said. Uh, just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, said, and people get offended. Go well, just be offended then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just be offended. They go well. I just they come up to you and go. Well, I didn't like that. I go okay. And they look around. <laughs> I go well. This isn't sports direct. I've got no supervisors. And they go well. You know what? What do you, go, what do you want to say? I go. What do you want to say? And they go, well, I just didn't like it. I go, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. You don't have to like everything you listen to, but, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Move on. That's what sometimes I think with the podcast. Sometimes, like we said from day one, I just wanted to get, you know, friends on, inspiring people, funny people, great stories, and just have yeah. chats like this. And then like, you kind of sometimes think, I wonder if people don't enjoy it or don't. And you're like, well, I don't give a fuck because I, yeah. I enjoy you chatting like this. And it's, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like, like Twitter, you know, you, 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 you joke. I, 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 I try a lot of stuff out on Twitter. And if it, if it, if people like or respond to it, I, I write that into like, because it's just a good litmus test, really, of jokes. Mm. You know, because if you do something and you get like, you know, a few hundred retweets or like a load of likes, you think, well, that's funny because I've, I've thrown it out there to people who either follow you or they don't. And then, and then you'll say something and you look and you've lost like 10 followers. And I go, well, I haven't really lost them, they're, they're just gone. You yeah. know, I, I, I don't care about them because they yeah. didn't like it. They, they didn't like me, and so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always find that it's a good test. You go, think I, they go, I've done this job. I've lost like under followers. I go, well, yeah, yeah. I've lost. Them. It's like mates, isn't it? Yeah. If, if, you, if you if you if your mates don't bother with you no more because you've said something or done something, they go, well, you haven't really lost them. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it's like, like that thing on offense again, Ricky Gervais, and it's so clever how he's done it. And he says it's you know taking offense to something on Twitter is like, he says if you see on graffiti, it's it's no, it's, it's like saying. Um, a sign saying, you know, guitar, guitar lessons. Guitar lessons. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I don't it. fucking want guitar lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them. It's so true though, isn't yeah. it? Like looking yeah. on Twitter, seeing something that's been retweeted by someone else. You know, you don't even follow this person, but it's been retweeted, so it's on your timeline and then getting offended by it. Yeah. It's like, does it not affect you? Like, does not, like we, we just did it. We recorded a podcast before you, we, we, just me and, me and um, Andy. And I'm not in, you know, I don't, I've got a normal job, you know, so all of this sort of, some of Andy's clan have uh, jumped onto me to some extent, but um, oh, we used to think it was weird, like, because not that I'm famous, got a big following, but <clears throat> a couple of thousand and some, you got a few more followers, didn't you? you were like, fuck, who are these people? Fucking, like, and it's a bit yeah, different we, for you, aren't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and uh, even people, 
obviously we just ourselves on this point like mm. you know we'll say whatever and uh, even people mentioning about god tom swears a lot doesn't it? and then suddenly i feel myself jesus christ like suddenly because i'm not used yeah, to so, this someone, all, like, someone tweeted them he started off the last last podcast and was like um he's like liverpool one don't fuck about do they and then um we were sponsored by liverpool one, okay so like, yeah, yeah and then so, someone someone's tweeted saying oh tom's fucking swearing a bit isn't he now and then someone else mentioned it, someone else and suddenly i feel like i'm Look, this is probably old school, uh, you know, old news for yeah. you. But like, so, for, suddenly you feel like Jesus, I, like you start thinking about yourself like a little bit more. Mm. And I can see how people get like in this whole comment Twitter thing, and suddenly like they're like evaluating their life and thinking, Jesus Christ, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. And like all this, like I can see how it affects people. Like mm. ultimately, I don't give a shit. I, I, that's it. I was like, I say it's always what I was. I'm always amazed what people are offended by, you know, mm. and the, the stuff that they've heard before, and then I go. But you're offended by that. There's a guy called Gav Webster is probably one of the best comedians you'll ever see. Geordie fella, lovely bloke, and he does this joke about a um, pandas and how they won't breed and stuff. He's going put them in council houses, then they'll breed them. <laughs> because they've already got the black eyes. Um, <laughs> and then, and then we were doing a gig, and someone came up to him and said, oh, "I didn't like that joke about that." And he went, "This is a joke about fictitious pandas mm. who live in a council house <laughs> that aren't real, and the people who've been on before them had just been like." Hor- not horrendous but hilarious yeah. but saying like the way like this like mm. the way things happen I was going you've taken offence at ghost yeah, pandas yeah. you know and, I, and it's going well I just think it's like it, it, there's literally I'd, I'd literally done a paedophile joke right before them <laughs> uh, which is much more like, not even much it was offensive you know uh, I mean and, and just like I can't forget what it was but I'm thinking but I said that and he went well you know that's funny isn't it I go well not, not to, to you it's okay but I thought I was, I'm always amazed about what people the most innocuous thing yeah. I remember doing a joke about saying like Scallies will never have testicular cancer because they've always got their hands on the pant, you know on the <laughs> balls I said they're constantly checking themselves and then like some fella like, a woman actually say my, my son had testicular cancer I go oh, that's, that's okay <laughs> and she go, you can't joke about it I go I can yeah. I can joke about that because I'm not saying just by saying it, A, it doesn't cause testicular cancer. I said, the joke is that Scallies, seem, and I don't know why it seems to be a thing, that people seem to think it's okay, yeah, walking yeah. around the, like, the streets with their hands on the balls like they're watching Panorama, you know, <laughs> and they're in front of the couch. It's like, mate, you've got your hands on your balls and you're offering me a chip. No, no. <laughs> and I've said to people, you know, I'm just getting all the go, mate, you've got your hands on your balls. You know, and and there's a, it must, it's a real scout thing as well. That's yeah, why yeah, yeah. I'm just walking around, but not like, not in the pockets on the balls <laughs> and, and I remember someone someone's going my son that takes taking a cancer and I was always saying like you know that, that was the joke and I go oh mate so I, I, I think that's a lump I go on I go not to oh, right, tic tac um, <laughs> it's a lump you know and, I, and she was like appalled that I just even said it in sentence I go no the joke is about someone feeling themselves up but she, she, would, she wouldn't hear yeah, none yeah. of that and she was just trying to, she was looking around like end going you can't say that I go I can you know but like, and then the worst thing is when he shouts out Jordan and then you have this argument then but I quite like arguing so it's quite funny so <laughs> that's the thing I think it's pers- perspective isn't it and I think with me as well going on linking onto that I think because what's happened in my life I'm, I'm not the greatest person to moan to about stuff do you know what I mean yeah. like if, yeah. if you're having a hard don't get me wrong you're having a hard time it's shit and I'd, I'd like to think I'm a good friend and I'll be supportive and give advice and help people through it but when people are moaning about you know mm. like stupid fucking mm. sh- and you're like yeah. There's a, there's a comedian called Jim Gaffigan he's a brilliant comedian he's really like slow paced but he just writes really brilliant hours but his wife had a brain tumour not long ago they had like five kids and he's just gone oh, I just realised that if like something happened to her all these kids would be you know adopted <laughs> <laughs> but he was going he said the bad thing is now he said I can't win any arguments I can't moan about not, and he's going, oh, she's like, she's, she's, she's touch wood, she's, she's fine now. He's going, because I mean, this Jimmy goes, goes, what about my seasonal allergies? <laughs> uh, and he said, you realise that there's not an argument now that he can ever moan yeah, about, yeah, so, yeah. because she had this like grapefruit-sized tumour. But again, terrible subject. His wife had this like he said, a great, and he, that was the joke he was saying. Like he goes, oh, "What comes out was a grapefruit? It's never. A, it's okay. It's a grape size tumor. You're gonna be okay." <laughs> there are people so stupid that like you know it has to be. You can't give measurements. It's got to be a fruit based size. And again, I was something that's terrible. Is why yeah. you know I can't think of anything worse. <clears throat> mm. You know, you imagine he misses that. Yeah, and and he made this like twenty minute routine about you know and how funny it was. And that's why I, again that's more cathartic for him because yeah. he's got to go on stage and talk about it yeah, yeah. Um, mate 100% right I this was a subject I didn't even speak about for fucking years and years and years it was only after I wrote the book that I started speaking about it more I went in the blast I lost um, my balls in the blast so okay. I couldn't have kids thankfully everything else still works and I'm 
still, still a top shagger. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, joking aside, no, thankfully everything still works, everything's all right, but I just couldn't have kids. But okay. for me, <clears throat> not being able to not being able to have children was I killed me, do you know what I mean? Really was really in a dark place and um, like I say, thankfully everything did, else did work, so I could still have a good sex life and stuff, but I just couldn't have kids. But I just didn't want to speak about it for ages and ages. And then when I wrote the book I thought I want to be honest and tell people the struggles I've went through and stuff. And um ends up talking about the moment. So when um, when I woke up from my coma and they realised that going all going all medical on you here, so that they realised that there could still be some sperm still in your tubes you've okay. from penis to try and get out okay. to try and freeze it. Um and again at the time, again this is really morbid and it's like <laughs> horrible a situation and it's so anyway, I have a catheter in they take this catheter out, which isn't a nice a pleasant experience. Then they take me over to the women's hospital in Birmingham, where I was in hospital. That's where everyone seems to wake up. And I don't know if you squad who's had the, yeah. been involved in something like that, and then you wake up in Birmingham. What a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Jesus Christ, send me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in, yeah. I'm in the Midlands. I thought it was like, Shelly Oak Hospital. Um, so yeah, I wake up in Birmingham, have that big fright, and then they're saying, right, you know, obviously you've lost uh, your testicles. We think there might be a way of getting sperm. Gonna take you over to the women's hospital and just try and get you to deposit one. And at the time, they wheel me over there they put this um, fucking porno on for me. I've got a fucking broken elbow. I've got a big fucking cage on me. Like I've got like scars on my face and chunks missing all over. And they just wheel me in this room. I've, I've like been a, a tough wank, that isn't it? I've been in a coma for two weeks. The calf has been taken out of me fucking knob like literally an hour before. And they just bang a little DVD player on and was like, right, you know, if you want to have kids in your life, right, from, okay. you need to crack that's one off that's now. That's a high pressure wank, though. It? <laughs> that's a danger wank and a half, isn't it? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so I didn't end up, didn't end up um, cracking one off, and thankfully years later I went on and went through IVF and had my little girl now Alba, so my little miracle. Oh, but so, for me, mate, that so what cute. you said then, that yeah. subject of like for years, mate, I didn't tell anyone. I was so it was such a hard subject, and it was such so traumatic for me at the time, and it was, and then I stand there now with with my surgeon, whose idea it was to try and get the sperm, and with my dad and stuff, mm. and like now joking about it, you think like. Again, just me with a fucking broken elbow with this big cage on me, like <laughs> fucking knobs killing from. Have you ever it. spoke? They've done that with during your speeches, have you? No, no, to, no. That's a, that's but a, that's what I mean. The thing is, if you ever wanted to have a go, I think a comment. That's what that's I mean. There's fantastic. so many, yeah, there's so, yeah. many so many things many. in there. I would love. I have to I have to go for a coffee and sit down because there's so many things yeah, that happen yeah, like that. That, yeah. that you know, I think would be funny, but it's just so funny that like you say at the time. Probably fucking one of the worst, couple of worst weeks of yeah. my life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You never ever think you'd be in a position where, like, you're Again, talking about thing of. You know, the reason people have got like these mental health issues because they just go, you know, I mean, that's horrific as a bloke. Oh, yeah. You're losing, you're, yeah. I couldn't, it was hard enough getting my dog done. I was like, come on, babe. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I felt like I right, couldn't go and go, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is not your choice, but this is what's happening. <laughs> hey, but again, it, it's hard as a bloke. That's probably the, like, yeah, oh, mate, the, yeah. the most touchy subject you could ever think about. Yeah. But if you can go on and, I mean, that's unique to like a, a very, how many comedians yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And you've got to talk about what, you know, people, because I used to teach a lot of comedy. I, and a lot of the comedians who, who, have, who have taught years have gone on to like be really big, and I'm really proud of that. Uh, but I always say to people, and they go, "What should I talk about?" And then you start talking, and they go, "I don't know." It's like saying to someone, "Tell me a joke," and yeah. I don't know. And you go, "I don't know any jokes." And then people start telling jokes. You go, "Actually, I do know a joke." Yeah. And then I always say to people, "Just talk about what you know." That's what. That's what. Pe- that's when you get like an honest reaction out of people is talking about the things that, that you know. And at the mm-hmm. time when I started, it was like about like living at home. Uh, and then as I got older, it was like what's happened, kids going bald, you know, just doing stupid things, you know, and and, and that's the key to comedy. I think is just talking mm. about what you know, because if you're trying to be something that you're not, you yeah. can see it. Yeah. A million miles, yeah. you see it from a million miles away. Just mm. talk about who you are and things that have happened. Uh, and if you were to say, say if you were to do, just obviously just do an open, open mic. What if you would give you? Me, if you give me anything for a month, and we went up once a week for a couple of hours. Got some pads. I'll get you down to the club. Get you used to like you know. You mean you used to public speaking. So after battle, really, is after work is you've done after work. But really, I, I reckon you could definitely. I could, you would piss it. What would you do? Would you start off like ten that, minute, t- just a ten minute <coughs> yeah. segment, and then just yeah, ten minutes. We said this to anyone who's listened before. I apologise for repeating, but I, we I said the t- similar thing to John Bishop. I was saying this things happened. I don't. I don't know. Speaking like a big corporate one and. Um, obviously being from Liverpool most of the time when people say you know you're red it mm. means you're Liverpool or Everton mm. so I've turned up after the speaking gig they took me for this big fancy dinner in Mayfair and I'm sitting down with the chairman CEO or whatever he was and at the time I'm like just a young 20 year old lad early 20s and all I drink was lager just with my dad in, mm. in the old man pubs in Bootle 
and then I'm sitting next to the CEO and he goes, so Andy, are you a, you a red? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, big red, big thinking he means fucking Liverpool. And he just starts pouring me <laughs> a fucking glass of red wine. And I'm fucking sitting there going, I don't even like red wine. And I've had to spend the next half an hour sipping this yeah. fucking big, oh, massive glass of red wine. Disgusting. But it's like just little things like yeah. that. That's what you know, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. obviously you can, but I, I do think massively as the book was for me when I sat down with one of my best mates now, Phil, Phil Reed, who wrote me book. That subject where I couldn't speak about it, just opening up and talking about it. It's probably like comedy, a comedy if you're talking about what you've been through. Yeah. So cathartic. Just felt like the weight of the yeah. world had been lifted <clears> off my shoulders, and the fact that it was in a book, and it's not, it's not a secret no more, and it's not this. Yeah. I can't tell anyone, and I hope no one knows about it. It was like, it's fucking out there now. You know, I'm, mm. I'm alright talking about it, and it's, it's cool. Yeah, I think when you do start talking <clears> about things, I mean, I've never spoke about. It. Like me, me daughter being ill really on stage and I don't think I would really because but like when you're just here talking about it you kind of forget what's what's going on here yeah. but you, you, you do, <laughs> you you do t- it does come out mm-hmm. and uh, but even uh, and I always find that you're always on I mean there was there was a time like a while ago when uh, my daughter she'd had like she's like two overdoses in the space of like you know a couple of months and she stupidly drank some uh, toilet duck you know, after, not a lot of it, she'd bleach. spat it out. Yeah, you know, mm. like the, not the bleach stuff, the, the green stuff, yeah. not actual mm. bleach. But we didn't realise that until she told us. Um, and then we were sitting there, and I mean, I was just like, my head was wrecked and stuff. And then the doctor's going on about this and that, and like what possible damage because she took like these tablets at the time. Uh, and goes, now, did you, how did you know? Like, she took toilet duck, and I just said, joking, I said, hey, it was this and that. And I said, and her breath was much better. <laughs> um, and the fellas looked at me, and my wife looked at me going, fucking stop but it just came out you know what I mean and I was going yeah a breath is much fresher uh, but I was thinking at the time he kind of like chuckled and we all laughed a bit but it helped because yeah, yeah, you know I was yeah. just kind of like oh just, mate yeah just, those just, moments mate yeah. so many in the military when we were in Afghan and lads are fucking getting hurt and catching it up just fucking making jokes mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm lying there so I severed my femoral artery do you reckon you'd have like six minutes before you can bleed yeah. to death all I'm getting told is um, you won't be winning the football tournament now, will you? You know, half a tour Andy getting to fucking go home, you jammy bastard, and yeah. you know, just fucking taking a piss. Yeah. Just like mm. we have this thing, my sergeant major. So we have this thing in the Marines. It's called eyebrows. So you got to imagine. So in the Marines, it's just full of women are allowed in them actually. But when I was in, it was just just the lads only, just fucking piss taking all the time, just yeah. constantly just being around the lads. So you're always getting each other on winds up all the time. So you'd have this thing called uh, your eyebrow or something. So if I said, um, oh, Chris, we've we've got to be at work tomorrow for nine, you've got eyebrows. And if I'd say eyebrows, you've got to be there for nine, that means, like, no, definitely you've got to be there for nine. So if I'd oh, said... Where eyebrows come Fucking <laughs> <nowhere. laughs> And the idea is, though, if you if you eyebrow something and you're lying about it, okay. you'd have to take your eyebrows off. Oh, really? Oh, I see. So that's so why it's called eyebrows. That's why, because okay, no okay. one's going to lie if right, eyebrows okay. are going to come oh, wow. God. So anyway... Um, so it's like that. So you say Jen, you say Jen, genuine eyebrows. You say, mate, fucking eyebrows, you've got to be there for nine. So that's where that comes from. I think that should be society now, shouldn't it? <laughs> Everyone should yeah. do that. Who wants to lose that? If I lost my eyebrows, I'd look horrendous. Yeah, oh, yeah. same. Imagine that in, in like workplaces or meetings. You know, yeah. like yeah. Did, you send, did you send that email? Yeah, did eyebrows. <laughs> did you send that email? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, I, I get fucking blown up and I'm lying there. And I had like 27 different injuries, me fucking having balls, me fucking broken elbow, broken sternum, chunks out both forearms, severed my femoral artery, two broken legs. Was that just you on your own when it happened? Was it? it was a few years? Me mate, me mate got blown up as well. He jumped over this ditch, hit a tripwire and two bombs, nothing between us, blowing him forward and blowing me back. So the, the way the bomb blew up, it basically just blew him forward and then I got all the shrapnel. So I'm lying there with all, the, <clears throat> with all these injuries and they put morphine in me and I'm a bit, a bit fucking high as a kite now. And the sergeant major comes over, obviously very well respected, like a mate of mine, but very well respected. And you know, and he uh, he comes over, mate. But I knew something was wrong with me, right? Like I still had it at the time, but um, I was fucking knew there was something wrong with me, right? Like, and I said, lads, I've still got my arms, legs. They're saying, yeah, Andy, you've still got them. Don't worry. I said, lads, don't fucking lie to me. I've still got my arms, legs. They're saying, yeah, you still got it. Now, normally, from what I've seen in the med training that I've done, you don't even normally put a tourniquet on if you've lost a leg. So a tourniquet, you know, like a belt, you put yeah. it on. Mm. So it only normally goes on to stop the bleed. So when I'm saying that... So some of the, like, the, the stuff, got already got tourniquets in already? You carry uh, tourniquets with you. I remember seeing like a, some kind of war programme where they had like 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 certain uniforms that got them the in. The Americans? So just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got so, them built in. So, just, so as soon as you do it, it's, it's like, built all the way though, up. isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, because they're so like, it must be so frequent, not frequent, but like... Yeah, so no, it is. It's, it's, it. It's, there's an argument about it, like whether it's good drills or whether it's a bit of a fucking... But some lads will have them on already, so if yeah. it does happen, you can just pull. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I, I don't know anyone who's done that, but I have heard of yeah, the, yeah. the Americans doing it. So they put this tourniquet on me, and I just straight away think I must have lost my leg. Then mm. if they put a tourniquet on me, and they're like, Andy, you've, you've still got your leg, mate, but you've got a bit of a gash, and your leg was short on it, and the, I put me the fucking pain. Right, it was her. I knew something was wrong with my right leg. Anyway, the sergeant major come over. He said, Granty, how are you doing? I said, Yeah, I'm good. Uh, he went, Sit. I went, Sir, have I still got my arms and legs? He said, Yeah, the lads have just told you you've still got your legs. And I went, Eyebrows, it's sir. And he went, Eyebrows, you fucking cheeky cunt. <laughs> I was just like, but, And then to this day, like, he, because uh, again, you just wouldn't normally say that yeah. to your sergeant major, but just that humour of like, you've just been blown up. You've probably got 20 minutes until yeah. you're fucking dead. Yeah. Say eyebrows have still got my legs, and it just—I I, I think, I think it's kind of, I don't know what it seems to be like a scout thing, really. I was thinking like that gallows humor mm. he- helps a lot. I remember years ago when my, my uncle died; he was only like 34, 35, which I was about eighteen at the time, eighteen, nineteen at the time. I'm thinking that's when you're that old, when you're that young, everyone's old. So it didn't really seem to be such a big thing. But now that I'm like ten years older than that, I think, oh my God, that was horrendous. Yeah. And he had like cancer, and we all, all the family, all the family that were there, and. Uh, he died over like the space of like a day, and it was just it went to the night. It was just horrible. Uh, but something happened, and I think one of my uncles farted his brother, like it was just a horrendous <laughs> fart. And then the other one, Chris went, "Fucking hell!" He goes, "I know." He asked Steve, "Dad?" He went, "Fucking hell!" He goes, "Even asked Steve smelled." <laughs> and he'd been dead like ten minutes, but everyone Jesus. laughed. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was just such a uh, like a, again, just a moment of release. It was just like this horrible thing had happened. But you, you can joke about those things. My yeah. family are all quite very funny as well. Uh, but I don't think you can laugh about those things and just joke. Yeah, about it's those amazing. Things. Yeah, and it gets you through things. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I said that to me, Mister. Said if I ever, I mean, obviously, I will die at some point. So if something happens to me tomorrow, I wouldn't want a really big miserable funeral. You know, I'd really like like a comedy roast. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of me like mates on and like a lot of like, comedians do and all just to go on and roast right. me and just and just have like a, a, a do yeah. like, in a church as well proper like you know <laughs> doing like five minute teaching getting like drum rolled off and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'd really love I'd hate to have a miserable a miserable funeral yeah um, who's that comedian that's uh, super- Russell how are you thinking no he's American guy who's, who does all the race oh yeah the, what's his name the baldy fella yeah yeah he, oh, what's his name fuck yeah oh, I can't remember his name now the roast man Jeff Oh, Jeff, it uh, is Jeff something. Yeah, yeah. But he's he, he's 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 brilliant, Harry. That, uh, that Russell Howard though, sorry, before going to the roast, he's on one where he had a bet Jeff with Ross. that kid, didn't he? Yeah, Jeff Ross, yeah. He had a bet with that kid and if the kids the kids had, had terminal cancer and he his, his wish was to, to meet Russell uh, Howard and um they went and he ends up becoming mates, Russell Howard and this kid, and he ends up and he said, sorry, yeah, if he he had in his wish he became mates and he said, Look, if I die, I want you to come to my funeral. Dressed as a uh, giant penis. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, and thankfully the kids didn't die. He made a recovery, and he said, um, he, "So he said, now that you've made a recovery, he said you've got to then come to one of my gigs dressed as a giant penis." Oh really? Yeah. And he gets this fucking kid on stage dressed up in a fucking giant oh, penis. It's a, it's a great story. How he yeah, tells yeah, a great yeah. joke. Russell Howard, he's a nice guy. He's red as well, Russell. Yeah, he's a big red. Is he? Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay, I, would, uh, I just wanted just before what. Do you th- do you feel like more more over the past twenty years since you've been doing it more people have become uh, people have become more offended easy, more easily or in in the stuff that you've done the last or... twenty years I'd say in the last four or five years it just seems to be people just seem to be a lot of you know you know pearl clutching what you coming know? up to you like you can, you can Not see so it more much, but you know I think in, you see like a lot of video yes yeah, so it just seems to, it, it's such it's amazing sometimes you you say certain things and I've said things and I and I. Even before I've thought about saying it, it's, it's out there. That's it. A lot of comedians get in trouble because they've just said it. They don't edit themselves. You just say mm-hmm. it. You're not obviously not like offensive stuff. You're not going to be go on and be racist because you're a racist person. You, you've got to, but you'll say things because people like, so, so, say something to you, and before you had a chance to evaluate it, you've just said it because you mm-hmm. know you've got to be quick. Mm-hmm. And people say, "Oh my god, you're really quick," and I go, "Yeah," but sometimes that's got me in, yeah, in yeah. trouble because I've just said stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my wife always said that to me when we used to go to like school and stuff. She says to me. Just say nothing. <laughs> just say nothing. Just nod, and I, because I'd just be like, because <laughs> I see the window, and as soon as it comes, I, I find it really hard to just get, not go. Because if you set it up, I'm gonna knock it down. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, that it, people, I think people just, uh, and you, you forget sometimes that you're not on stage. And I remember like years ago, I bought a, a second-hand car at the time, and because my little girl was little, then the the, the car had loads of a. Uh, in the boot, there was loads of toys, just like little, you know, little stupid things. And the girl went, and the woman said to me, "Oh, you can always tell the dads." I said, "It's okay, so I'm a paedophile." <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of went. And I was like, these are like me laws, uh, and I remember thinking, "Chris, you're not 
you can't say this to, <laughs> you, you know, to, <laughs> you know, that's you brilliant. know, yeah. I remember thinking, I, I mean, Mr. Lobby going, <laughs> I'm trying to get finance. I'm like that. I'm, a, I'm sitting there going, uh, I remember thinking, stop talking, no. Chris. Just, but my missus always says to me, when we go to like anything official, like, you know, mortgage type things years ago or like, you know, like school <laughs> things, she'll say to me, just shut yeah, up. Don't say anything. Just, yeah, I bet up. schools are, uh, Jesus, yeah. And you can't tell the things. You know, oh, God, yeah. just kind of go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids not going to this school. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think a lot of comedians probably suffer with that. They just, they, it's 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 that double edged sword. Go well, you've got what you've got. You know, mm. they're just going to do it. You know, they can't help it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. you can't help you to a certain extent. You know, it's like anything. You know, you can you can stop yourself. But I think a lot of comedians just bite their lips. Yeah. Do, um, Thingy Bob Boyle got in trouble. If it, well, he's got in trouble quite a few times, hasn't he? So it's Jimmy Carr actually. Isn't Jimmy Carr getting. Oh no, that was the tax thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, he was the he, he was one a while ago. Then he was talking about say Frankie Boyle. Frank, sorry, Frank, Frank, yeah, Boyle. Frankie Boyle. But Jimmy Carter, he came out with one a while ago. He's saying dwarfs are just abortions <laughs> that didn't make it. That was so um, <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, Jesus. and like you know, and I've got, I've got like a, a, a friend who's Tanya Lee Davis. She's a brain comedian, but she's a dwarf uh, or a little person, as they like to be called. Um, and she was like freaking out at it, and you think, well, she wasn't happy with it, no, no, not at all. Even as a comedian, she was thinking, well, and I, I, in a way, I can kind of see both the points of view really because they're, they're saying like, you know, like there's a family, there's a like high suicide rate of little people because they get like so much stick. It's kind of like this uh, accepted type of abuse because they're so because they're like an easy target, as it were. Mm. Uh, but I think, well, that, on the other side, it was still quite a good joke. But if you, I'm sure yeah. it would be funny if I was a little person and mm. just like you know, there's a high proportion of like little people kids who get a lot of shit so they kill themselves so you think well I'm sure mm. Jimmy Carr doesn't it's, it's that about thing that. again though yeah. about other people taking offence Jimmy Carr's on a joke because he used to come to um, the hospital as well he used mm. to go around Birmingham to visit all the injured soldiers and he comes come visit me really nice guy and stuff and he spent a couple of minutes with him but he seemed like a nice guy and then he made a joke saying um, the one great thing about the war in Afghan is that we're going to have a great Paralympic team in a few years time Yeah. And it's fucking true. Yeah. I, I've got loads of mates who went to Parliament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was fucking it was a good joke, and it was true. And the amount of people you can't fucking say that they've saved our country. They've brave men and well, women. That's again. That's again. Again, Fuck you off. didn't take offence. Yeah. And that's joke about you. Yeah. You know. And why does so, why does someone else take offence for you? Yeah. yeah if I'm you're right. not offended, don't be offended. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a funny joke, you know. And that's the thing with comedians. Comedians will find everything funny mm. there's that especially comedians because we're so used to seeing stuff we're really they just got such a dark sense of humor because it takes we see comedy all the time so it takes a lot well i was gonna say what are you like then where you kind of non-comedy friends is it you, is you not not kind of saying you find them boring but is it like do, do you notice yourself it's, like, it's quite refreshing change to be honest i was gonna say just, do you like, i've got yourself? like a, a really good group of friends a uh, one in particular we we'll, we'll see like at least once a week we go to pictures together we watch films together and we can just sit down and just say nothing and just chat about nothing really and just mm. you know, and, it, and it's nice he's very funny actually uh, but not like you know stand up stage you know stand on stage funny and stuff but uh, it is I wouldn't hang around with comedians if you paid me really the annoying <laughs> massive egos you know what I mean it's, you know, it's just everyone's <laughs> I get a gang of comedians together it's, it's hard work because they're all trying to is it like one up each other yeah, really, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I think it's like footballers you know they're all trying to I mean, it's it's quite exciting. If they're, they're nice, it's like any job. It's there's some comedians who are just love to bits, and they're nice people. And there's some who just obviously like anything. You know, there's, there's knobs as well. But yeah, yeah. yeah and well, it's the funny thing, isn't it? People think if like you, uh, yeah, like if you're a funny comedian, then you you're the nicest person. Oh, people in the say world. my wife oh, must be great, must be great. You're living with a comedian, she's like, yeah, it's it's a real treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I've been with my missus for like 29 years. You know. Uh, uh, but like people are like, oh, it must be great. Like, I've got like people who come to see me quite a lot. They go, oh my god, it must be fantastic. There's a woman came up huge, and I was I was the picture on her wallpaper with her husband what? there. I was like, what? Really? Hell, mate, have a word. <laughs> um, and she took a picture and grabbed my ass. I was like, mate, this could happen. Come on, let's get together. Let's get the fruit ball out. Um, and she's going to my missus. Oh my god, it must be amazing. Like I'm like I'm this like this come just yeah. jump into the room and there's like intro music and I just do <laughs> zingers and one line. I said the cats and the dogs. Uh, and she's like, oh yes. Yeah, I'm like a miserable cat when I'm in the house. Uh, but she always she always laughs and go. People say to her, "Oh, it must be amazing." It's funny. Yeah. Like, oh, Do you ever get like people like you get Klingon? Kling, <coughs> is it Klingons? Can you call them Klingon? Klingons. What do you mean? You? Well, like people who um, not stalk you, but like 
Do you ever you know, get I'm like regulars and stuff? So <laughs> it's, nice. it's nice though, you know, if they come to see you and I think, and I'm not even that prolific writer, I think you just come to see me say the same shit yeah. <laughs> that I said like two weeks ago. I oh, it's nice though, isn't it, when you have people, like about people who've read the book or listen to the podcast and stuff or and follow you and say, oh, come over and, oh, you're Andy, and that, that, that's really nice. So I, d- I didn't mean like by you, but like what I meant was that when, we, when remember when Vicey was on, he said that there's people who sort of like cling on to like the veteran community and like, like oh, yeah. adore them and that, that, yeah, that, that's what I meant. Who, yeah, there's some people who, yeah. Yeah, you don't some... get envy get any groupies or so like them gag hags <laughs> <laughs> gag hags yeah you know like, like weird like who likes the, the, yeah. if you comedians are like a real like proper circle I've never had no one stalk me but I've had like oh man yeah I've had, I've had a few like I told you the one about the London one didn't I or there's this there's this guy on no, him, you haven't, no. but I told this story no, no, it's no. Bit fucking weird so that, I think there are like people who like cling on to like injured injured soldier cards and like you know Oh, I think it's a very romantic story for them, isn't it? Yeah, in their maybe, mind, yeah. It's like, oh my God, it's like mm. Saving Private Ryan type issue. Isn't uh, you know, genuinely like though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it is, you mm. know, and you've lived mm. this, through this amazing thing. It's not like you sprained your ankle going down Movama. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this story, Movama, starring Brad Pitt. It's <laughs> Andy Grant. Ah, I think I've rolled it. I'll just walk it off. It's fine. <laughs> it's all right now. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a guy called uh, Matt Reed, and he's he's from Sunderland, lovely lovely fella. And uh, some woman got like a, a tattoo of him on his back, and not like a little fuck little up, really? thing, yeah. It was like that, you know, the Alan Partridge one, like the guy. I'm, I've got all your books, yeah. and it's like this massive like tattoo, and he was just like, she just turned up, and went, there you go, and he was like. You know, is it real? And oh, it was real. She got Jesus. this tattoo, and then she she turned up at his house, and she oh, just like, probably started following us, like proper, like like a uh, like proper store. Jesus! Imagine if someone gets a fucking tattoo. That'd be fucking, amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'd love it, mate. Yeah, I'd be <laughs> laughing my head off. <laughs> stuck it or my stump. Or my stump. I'd get. I'd ask my stump if anyone's thinking about doing. I get my stump on them. No, this there was a guy. This one. So this um, it was only when I just started doing the public speaking I created that. Like a Facebook page that people could like, and then Instagram and Twitter, and this guy, um, I think I blocked him off everything. I think now, I don't know why I have any way of telling this story, but anyway, <laughs> and he, um, he's out of the window, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was just messaged, like liked everything I'd done, mm. and like commented on everything I'd done, and to the point where it was just a bit weird. Yeah. It was just a bit like, and he's just like, "Well done, bro. So proud of you, bro. I hate that as well. That does me end and people calling you bro, um." Anyway, you're just just constantly always seeing everything to put up and stuff. It was a bit. Anyway, on my website, I just got like an old Nokia for like a fucking drug dealer phone. Just yeah. for you know, if anyone wants to contact me with regards to any speaking inquiries, which was fucking stupid because obviously, why would anyone ring? They just email. But anyway, at the time when I first started doing it, got this phone, and then I put. Um, I was going down to Abseil Shard in London. I got the opportunity to go and do that. So I was like, oh, I'm so super excited getting to go down to London. And then his comments are going, uh, hey, bro, I'm, I'm in London. Uh, let me know when you're here. And he's commented again, hey, bro, um, what train are you on? I'll meet you at the station. I've never met this guy in, in my life. And I'd looked on his profile and he looked a bit, bit weird, like just a bit, I don't know, just the bit alarm Norman, bells. Yeah. Bit Norman Bates. Yeah, very <laughs> normal. up his mum's flesh suit on. It, it was weird. <laughs> anyway, so I just fucking ignored it. And then I'm starting to think, oh, fucking, I hope he's not on the, like, waiting for me at Houston. Anyway, my missus at the time was going, you've left your work phone thing here. But I was like, no one used to ring me on it anyway. Fucking ringing. I had like seven, eight missed calls. I went, who the fuck's ringing that? And he texted me and rang me like seven, eight times and texted me saying, hey, bro, um, what train are you on? I can come meet you. He texted me loads and rang me loads. Yes, Dan. (laughs) And um, fucking yeah. Like, thankfully, thankfully I didn't see him. You didn't see him at the time. But yeah, it was was fucking weird. Like... That's a bit mad, isn't it? Mm. Disturbing, isn't it? But you get the, obviously the really nice ones after the books came out. People have obviously read the book and get loads of nice messages about that, which which is really nice. But again, I always feel a bit of a pressure that you're saying before about you know everyone thinks that you're this dead mm. funny husband. Yeah, yeah. People think that just because I've had a bit of a crazy story and hopefully I've inspired them and motivated them and hopefully it is inspirational to them. I think people sometimes might think I'm this fucking fantastic, amazing guy. You know, yeah. all it's like fucking girlfriends I've had in the past and my dad and my sisters are like fucking if only people knew what you were like fucking all the time so I think do you know what I mean and I do feel that like for example I'm like go to match all the time so I've got like a good group of lads I go to game with sometimes like you'd be standing there I'll be have like five or six pints and I'm effing and blinding about Liverpool and this and then someone will go are you coming down to talk at my school can I have a photo on it I feel quite like yeah, you know because I'm not this yeah like the last the last kind of version you had of me was this like 
running with me little girl on the park in the yeah. on the beach or yeah. something and this inspirational figure and now I'm like fucking standing there fucking bladded fucking eight yeah, pounds deep sound, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a bit weird what people's perception is of you yeah. isn't it at times yeah. I always think that's interesting like, I mean that's why I was, I've always thought I'm just like raising myself on stage and mm. I'm trying you know being like I'm not uh, I'm just trying to just try and have a laugh at people and stuff but again you can't be like on all the time can you no. you, everyone's going to moan about stuff and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Get on with things, haven't you? So, yeah. Chris, are you st- are you still um, you- you're still happy then? Just you just literally you, there's when you say before you yeah, sort of no ambition that you just completely this is what well, you know what 50, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, this I mean, I would like for, I mean, if someone says to me, oh, do you want to go on like you know mock the week? I'd be made up, you know what I mean? I've you know I, I just do certain things and stuff and stuff that still like does pop up and stuff. I was in like a, I was in like a. Have you ever seen that 10 star on the Sky Atlantic? I filmed the scene for that last week in the, in the Vines with Tim Roth, yeah, me and really, yeah. Keith Carter, Adam Stone, yeah, it's only like a little bit like it's just being comedians on stage and stuff it does pop up and stuff and if, if, if it did go like massive, I'd be made up but it, a lot of comedians, I, I, not a lot of comedians but like there's certain comedians you think have been going for a long time you think, and they see people who started like three years ago and all of a sudden they're on like the telly and stuff they get really embittered about it but and I always think, well, this doesn't really work that way you know, mm. and I think they're the ones who let themselves get eat themselves up inside because yeah. uh, whereas all my ambition dream was to be a, 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 a performing you know and then a living from it and that's all I wanted and you can't moan when you get it and go well I want all this now and mm. if, if stuff would have happened that you know or it does happen that you get to do like bigger and better things you know I'm not saying I've got like this is this is all I want I don't want anymore but I'm saying I'm happy and content with my life at the moment because I've got something great um, and it's not like the be all and end all of of my life is to be on the telly and all that like DVDs out and stuff and that I just, I'm just quite low maintenance really I suppose but I think yeah. a lot of people just kind of go well why aren't I doing this and, and the, 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 they're so asked about what they haven't got and they just don't really appreciate what they have got you know I've always said that I always find that when something horrible happens like whether it will be like a relative dying or stuff and all you'd ever want is last week when they were here with yeah. you and stuff people are like oh I want this I want that and you go when, when something horrible happens all you want is last week which was boring that you still moaned about and I always think just appreciate what you've got right now because mm-hmm. you're not going to have it forever you're not going to have everyone forever um, enjoy what you've got because I always find that people just moan about what, what they haven't got yet and they just got to take stock and go well I've got it you know yeah. at the moment I mean, you know, I'm not a millionaire I'm not like but I'm not poor you know, I, I, you know I've got a little girl and she's not well but she could be worse you know mm. and me, I've got you know, me little dogs and I go walk every day and you know I'm not working like five days a week anymore for like minimum not even minimum wage when I was working for it and stuff and again sometimes you need to have like a bit of a shit time to appreciate what you've got totally yeah you know just get that perspective isn't yeah, it yeah yeah mm. it is about perspective uh, I mean you've been through like you know something horrendous and I'm sure you'd, you'd, you'd kill to have that like the week before that happened mm. so you could appreciate stuff but all that's happened to you but you've come out of it mm. you know a, you know, a better person you appreciate you just got to appreciate what you've got yeah, yeah. Uh, most definitely anyway, yeah again like when people go oh yeah I want this I want that you go well we all want that we all want a better car we all want a bigger house we all want a mm. bigger telly and stuff and whatever but you, you, sometimes it's and I think what you're doing as well mate, making people laugh it's like I get a buzz from hopefully trying to inspire people but I think when you're when you're making people feel good whether it's inspiring yeah, them or making yeah, them yeah, laugh that, whatever yeah, that may it's, be it's, a, it's the nicest thing in the world you know when you've got them there was a guy last week and he was sitting on the front row and he was with like a party of about eight people and he was choking he was just like, and he and he was making. He, I always find that, that it's like it's very zen. It's the laugh with no noise. You know, someone just going, yeah. and yeah. they're just making no. And the laugh on that lad that it's gone past laughter, and he was just going, stop, stop, <laughs> stop. And I was going, what's up with him? And, he's, and his mate was slapping on the back, and he was just, and then he, he was he was laughing that much that when he came up to me in the interval, he was trying to explain what he was laughing at. But he couldn't get it out, and he was laughing again as much. And I think yeah. you know, it's so good when you've amazing, got the people. Yeah. There was a guy a while ago, <laughs> and he, he he got up in the middle, of, and he was laughing that much, and he, he was rushing to the door, going, "You okay?" Because when someone moves in the middle of comedy club, you're a bit of a no one really moves in comedy because they've really got to, unless yeah. they're, they're going for a cheeky stripe in the bug, <laughs> or like they, they don't want to. And he's got and he's got to go. And I, and I was going, "Where are you going?" He's got, got to go, got to go. And then he, he shit himself laughing. 
Really? <laughs> genuinely pooed his pants hell. laughing at it. And then I went, fucking hell, and put that on my posters. You'll shit yourself laughing. <laughs> and he's going and goes, I've got IBS anyway. He said, but I, I laughed that much. He said that I just pooed. And he goes, I'm trying to get out. And he said, I feel it going down my oh. undies. And he said, I was trying to get out before it came off my, my pants. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fair enough, fella. And he said, he said, he goes, don't, don't tell anyone, which I did tell everyone. <laughs> um, but he, he shit himself. And I thought, I thought you know, I, was, I just love that bit when you've got a room full of people and that yeah. feedback because you can see the feedback oh, like yeah. that it it's, must so, be just... it's so instant you know that's yeah, the thing yeah. with, with comedy is that it's, it's not like you know you, you, you're as good as, as bad or you are at the time but when you've got them from the off mm. and you've just got like a room full of people and the hanger on everywhere it's such a nice yeah. thing to have and that they're all just I mean what's the better thing you can give anyone yeah. is laugh yeah. you go out for a laugh don't you we yeah. have a laugh when you have a good time, you have a laugh. Mm. You know, even like when you like say you're in Afghanistan, you have a laugh. Yeah. You know, because oh, my 100%, you know, yeah. yeah, you know, there's been terrible situations where all you'd ever really want is a laugh. And I, I always start off my presentation as well with, with a joke because it's you, you want people on your side straight away and you want mm. for the 40 minutes I'm speaking to everyone to have a good time. And I show like, show this video for 30 seconds and then there's four pictures. And, I, and, and the reason I do this is to try and get people to know that although it's going to be emotive and you'll take things from it and you'll be inspired it's going to be funny yeah. as well and it's the picture of me and my mum uh, when I was a kid like playing football uh, me passing out in the Marines me being in a coma and then me surfing in, Afgh- in, in California and I say I'm going to take you on a journey that starts with me learning to play football with my mum aged one or two passing out as a Royal Marine Commando aged 18 to being blown up in Afghanistan, to me claiming to be the only one-legged scouser to go surfing in California. And straight away, people are like, this is going to be actually, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to be all like death doom and destruction and, gloom, yeah, and doom yeah. and gloom. It's, and then you just get that kind of nice feeling and it, it, you can just feel it going both ways, <laughs> then, can't you? Straight I mean, away, I, I, suppose that, I suppose that's very important for you to do because at first people kind of go on, can, can we laugh? Yeah, it's going to be heavy, can this. Can we laugh? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be okay to laugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a few like there's a few comedians who've got like issues like uh, like Francesca Martin who've got like I think they've got like Parkinson's type thing and they've got like real obvious type issues like Lawrence Clark in the wheelchair, you know, and he 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 he's got Parkinson's I think or multiple sclerosis something like that and he and he talks very affected, and he always comes on and goes, I won't really do the voice but I can't not do it without doing it. And he's a lovely fellow, a great mate, and he goes, my name's Lawrence Clark. You know, if you can't understand what I'm saying, there's fuck all I can do about it. <laughs> but his voice is more affected than that. But you can see people kind of going. And they, they listen anyway because you've got to listen to it. It's not just something you can just. Yeah, it's yeah, easy yeah. to listen to because he has his voice is very affected. But he just kind of goes, "Fuck off!" And everyone goes, "Oh, thank fuck he knows." Yeah. You know what I mean? He knows, and it's such a great icebreaker you've got. Yeah, and again, yeah. when you've got like that kind of obvious issue, people are kind of going, "Shit, does he know? Does, yeah, he, yeah. does he know? Does he know? Like even like Tanya Lee's like a little bit. She kind of people kind of they're kind of going, is she can we?" Yeah. <laughs> Can everyone else see her? <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? Hey, and like, they, and they talk about it, and they go, "Oh, thank fuck, they know." We can, and they can joke about it, and yeah. you can get across yeah. it. But you've you've got to do that, you know. Yeah, and that's, totally, mate. Yeah, you, you know. It's, it's, would you would you do it, Andy? Tim, Tim, mate, I'd love to, I, mate. I yeah, think you should know. do that. I think that, that's just something we should aim for. Yeah. Oh, maybe we'll we'll catch up for Give a couple We'll go for a, a piece. If you are willing to come down, oh, we may have gone on holiday on Monday for two weeks, and then May yes, September, mate. I'll give you a shout, and yeah. we'll uh, definitely, absolutely, yeah, you can. They definitely put you in somewhere. I've always day. wanted to have a go, and I've always <laughs> felt like, but I, but the thing is, I'm not a funny person. Like, the, mate, you, you've had me laughing fucking loads already. Yeah, but you're very affable though, and you've got personality, and you've got a story as well. So mm. you've ticked like. But the thing is, you know, saying the comedians yeah. that are funny all the time, I think I'd be in one of the boxes where it's like, you probably look at me and go, he's, he's not that funny. But maybe if I did work with you, and I'd put maybe 15 minutes together, but then off stage you'd be like, he's not even fucking funny. Like, <laughs> like my mates, me dad would be like. But you're not funny though, do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what they'd be saying if I told them the, I was doing it. There was a lad I seen a lad I went to school with a while ago, and he, he was, he's a bit of a knob in school actually, but he's a bit of a Billy Big Bollocks in school, and he was saying to me, uh, he goes, ah, oh, like, I remember like, being really funny in school, and, and he's basically saying that I, I took his life. <laughs> and he's gone, I remember, I was like, you know, he's always that one who, I was funny you know, he snubbed every bird, and he fingered everyone on column and thought he was brilliant. <laughs> and then he's going, he goes, well, you weren't even funny in school ago. Well, I was, but he probably didn't talk to me. Uh, and he's going, you were funny in school. And I was like, I, 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 I was a bit funny. <laughs> um, like, I, remember, I had like teachers come. I remember, I remember doing one a while ago, and there's like a lot of my old teachers just by chance were just there. 
Yeah. And uh, my old PE teacher, like he was, he got a bit pissed and he started shouting out. He was a bit of a grump uh, at the time, but he was, he was clearly bad. I remember thinking, oh, okay, here we go. Fucking ding, ding. And I just absolutely pummeled him. Yeah, and, him yeah. and he was, I was going, yeah, it's the only PE teacher who, had, who made the kids play skins versus skins. <laughs> uh, you know, even if you had a kitty, he made you play in your underpants. <laughs> uh, but, and, and he was just, and he just took it. And at the end, he cut uh. to me and went, yeah, I asked for that. I go, oh, mate, you don't know how good that felt. Yeah, that yeah. was for me and all, everyone <laughs> in my year. And he was a, little, he was a nice bloke, but he, he was a bit of a, a strict teacher. But I remember thinking, you're doing this now. Yeah. You know, this is, this is happening. Uh, which, which, was, which was great, like, but it, it's, it's, it's nice when you can come back from stuff like that. But again, you've just got to, you've got to talk about, yeah. you, could, you, could, you could easily, tell me, you could have, out of what you say already, you could have like a 10, 15 minute set. You could, oh, mate, no, we're definitely. I want to. Yeah, you should do that. I want to uh, catch up here in September, mate. Yeah, I should make it into a thing. Is it? Make it, cause it's, I, I used to teach like a, like comedy like to a lot of kids. Uh, but we used to, when I used, I used to do stuff a lot of the uh, LFC, you know, the, the foundation, the trust. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've worked about the LFC yeah, foundation. Yeah, we used to do that quite a bit. We used to go to Anfield and do. We did shows there. Uh, but it was just people, just like yourself. and and just random people and we'd have we'd do a show and then we'd get we'd do like a show with like you know, like seven eight people on and they'll like do 10 minutes each but they'd always do well mm. uh, it's, it's not so much teaching comedy it's not so much as teaching them what to say it's not what to do mm. it's holding yourself and you know just like delivering stuff you can you get the material out of them easy enough and you start talking about them because everyone's got a funny story mm. everyone's got something embarrassing and the more like self-deprecating or the more embarrassing the story is mm. the, the, the the better the jokes you yeah. know mm. You know, if you can talk about like you know, you know, losing your testicles in a bomb blast, you can talk about anything. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's not going to be everyone's going to sit there and go, "Oh, I don't remember that." <laughs> you know, because yeah, everyone, yeah. it's yeah. not like Peter K. Like garlic bread, big light. Everyone's got the you know, like, but that story. Yeah, yeah. But you got like something unique to yourself. Yeah. It's, um, it'd be, I think it'd be I want to do that. I think, I yeah, think it'd be should, yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. That. You and that, you, should, you, should, you both do it. Yeah, and it's that public speaking that once you've, if because obviously so have you done any public speaking, you must have to speak. And yeah, work we work and, and stuff. stuff yeah. yeah, yeah. But what's your job in the day? So, uh, well, it's, I've upgraded now. Um, so my well, the job title is commercial director. So we uh, we work, we move laboratories and that sort of thing. Mm. It's funny Thanks. when he told uh, John Bishbash the same question about what you're doing. You should move laboratories, and that's what he used to do. Oh John yeah, so John, stuff. Yeah, so yeah, John was yeah, like, yeah. where for? And yeah. then he said the company went, to, and then I was just like this for five minutes. Then, then too, so that's what used to be like, really funny is that, especially when John started, that people, because he's got this really like, you know, like kind of like unique Scouse accent. Yeah, it's like a go, slow yeah, Scouse accent. Yeah. And he's not like, because he just, he, mm. people go, oh, you moved. It's like, yeah, and he was 10. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You've got to go with your family because they're, they're all the stuff. <laughs> uh, and like, people have a go at him. But I remember like seeing him, like, especially in, like, in, in his early years, is because you, you listen to him, and if you didn't know him, you think, he's a bit soft. He's, he's clearly a bit dim, even though he's he's probably one of the fastest, quickest comedians I've ever seen in my life. And I've, I've seen him roll with so many punches, like, you know, gigs that were undoable. He's gone on and ripped them. I remember we did a gig and there was like a load of like medical people in and he'd come straight from work and he had like a suit on and stuff and he was doing some stuff and someone shouted shout something out and it was like a medical type thing and he's going, well, actually, I, and they were all going, really? Blah, blah, blah. And he just fired off all this, like, not only was it a fantastic like story about like, he did this routine that no one else could do on the spot about like these like medical procedures and these <laughs> pharmaceutical you know these uh, massive words yeah. and it was uh, incredible and you're kind of going what the it's yeah. like it's like someone like, it's like me speaking Japanese to like a Japanese person in the audience people going you you know what I mean? You're like, like, hey. it's like it's just that you don't don't see any common because yeah, I remember yeah. like people used to underestimate him so much. Because he's a bit like, well, you know, and he's, he's yeah. so like kind of laid back, and he's yeah. he, he doesn't speak very quickly, John. It's all mm. very measured. Uh, but I think in that time, because he used to kind of go, well, and in that, well, he's devised this like amazing routine, yeah. and he was he was he still is, you know, in, incredible like that. So it's that story t- the, with the way that you guys can tell stories. Sto- mm. It's just that, and and I suppose it's just is it structuring that story? Are you all structured on the Nemo one? We didn't that. You have to watch it before we we won't watch it now. We don't like watching it, but um, I'll get Tom to watch it later. That, I, mean, that, I, haven't, that, I haven't done that joke for years. That story, either. it's fucking hilarious. It's like a four minute story. It's just told at just the right level, right? And it's I quite it's like that because the more you tell at the end that you can you can get you, you, you hold them just when you do the, the like the rules of like the three things. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't done. I have to, I'm I, I would I would joke like how would you come up with that joke? That like, joke is is absolutely. I, I am. There's some people who write. I'm a terrible writer. I'm not good at writing jokes. I can't just sit down 
and, and write down and write routines i write down what i say and then i go and then people have to go okay that's funny then i'll write it down but there needs to be like a a a, a a catalyst for it mm. uh, i'm good at writing with people because i'm good at adding on to people's stories because uh, but that story was i mean the story is like my brother-in-law at the time he, he was going on about how, how unrealistic it was and i said blah, 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 but you're okay with that and yeah, then, yeah. so i wrote a, a, the routine came from that the crux of it was true mm. uh, but the end of it was just like uh, like, 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 like i've got i've got this routine about like, i had a wasp nest and it's a, a big routine that i've got now and like the, the fella came out and he was really miserable this was about two years ago now and he came out and he's like, hey, what's the problem? I said, like, well, it's, you know, it's the wasps. And he looked up and he was going, oh, yeah, it's the fucking load of them, isn't it? I was like, well, well, get me, because it was just one. I probably wouldn't have fucking rang you. <laughs> uh, you know, and I said that to him, and I was like, what a stupid thing to say. He goes, yeah, you've got loads. I was going, yeah, I was going, yeah, wait, sorry, up. There's one. There's only, he's very popular. <laughs> a lot of followers on Twitter. Um, and I wrote this routine about, like, that, and that came from, like, just saying it. Yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. I, would, I couldn't have written I couldn't have written that joke yeah, all suppose, day. Yeah. But in that moment, to that guy, just on a Tuesday morning, yeah. uh, and it just carries over, you know, to, like, and the story is about how, you know, it, it, it grows from there it's a massive like yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. snowballs from that and that's us the crux of it is true and i always yeah. find that if i don't really do much like go anywhere or do things my 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 output goes down but i need like catalysts of things mm. that have happened yeah uh, mm. to well like just like as in like it, oh, at the train station just seeing yeah, that just 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 is that it, people like watching that, isn't that, what yeah that was thing i i i I wouldn't have noticed yeah. any of that to look in, you know, to take that and yeah. then run with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just a passing conversation. You've gone, yeah, you've got loads of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Like, but yeah. to, do you know yeah. what I mean? But I, mean like, I think as comedians, I mean, anyway, me personally, if there's a joke there, I'll, I'll, I'll find it, you know, mm, I yeah. want it, even if it's just to one bloke, if it's an audience of one, he didn't laugh because he was so miserable. That's the crux of the joke that he was so miserable. And he was just like, I feel the same. That was fucking funny, mate. He said <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was the, the, that was the thing about it. He was genuinely like a, and I remember saying to him, and I said, this is like down at the punchline joke, I said, this, I said, this is a bit of a weird joke, a bit of a weird job. I said, how did you get into this? And he just went, I really just fucking hate one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, then he, went, then he went to me, he went, if I had my way, he goes, I'd do them one at a time. I was like that. Okay, what the fuck? I was psychopathic. That's a sinister thing. <laughs> and I was saying to I said, I just there's an image of him going back to his basement at the end of the day, like <laughs> Buffalo Bill, like, <laughs> like Sands of the Lambs, are just knob between his legs with wasps tied up in yogurt pots in his basement, like devil <laughs> floss. <laughs> 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 hey, but, but it just, I remember thinking, so, I'm so glad that a. Uh, it happened. That I mean, I had to pay seventy quid to get it because I've got like a like a, the eight minute routine about oh, that, yeah, uh, yeah, about yeah. that happened. And even like just stupid things like like I went to Slimmer World because I, I, I lost like four stone, um, like a like year and a half ago, and I put like a bit back on. But I'm always kind of fighting it. But I got like this a great routine about going to Slimmer World, uh, and about like people that you meet there and being the only bloke in a Slimmer World group, uh, and because the, the shit that people come out with. It was just sitting there going, my God, I'm so glad I came here because this is brilliant. Yeah. You know, pe- 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 uh, uh, the, the, the stuff that people would say, it was just like superb. And she, like the, 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 the most genuinely woman, she said she put weight on that weekend. She said, I was making cakes with the kids. I didn't eat none of the cakes. So and, she <laughs> said, and, she said, and she said, she goes, I think what it was. And she said this with a genuine straight face. She goes, I think when I was making the cakes with the kids, I think I absorbed some of the cream <laughs> and oh, sugar through my fingers, like like osmosis, like she's ET, you know what I mean? And I was sitting there going, oh my God, I'm sitting there going, oh, Camilo, keep talking. Uh, and I was, uh, 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 and, and, and like people going, I was got, you got to count like your points and stuff and like your sins and stuff. She's going, well, I have a glass of wine, but I don't count that one. And then I had me sins on after the first glass of wine. I was like, well, you don't count your sins, love. You can have as fucking much as you want. Yeah. Oh, I have like a roast dinner and a kebab and a pizza, but don't count them. I don't write, I don't, because I don't write it down in my little book, it doesn't count. And I'm sitting there going, this is just gold, you know, and it was, mm. it was, it was and like, because you're losing weight fast and stuff, but I've got this, like, this routine now that I just love doing uh, because it's so true, you know, because uh, men just lose weight faster than women, but you can see when you get like a gang of women together, and because a lot of people, there's loads and loads of women who go to like stem whale weight watchers and stuff, uh, and there's people saying to me, I, and when I'd lost like a lot of weight, they're going, oh my God, what have you been eating? Because you've been eating, you look great. And I go, less. <laughs> I've been eating less and then we go fuck I was hoping it was a pill or a milkshake <laughs> uh, but like you know it was just yeah. it, was, it, it, was, it was but like stuff comes from stuff you know yeah. that's why again you talk about like stuff that's happened to you and then I'm going to talk about stuff that's happened to me and going to Slim World and losing weight it was it was a great you know 
stupid thing you know that just that's why i like doing various things and going away to certain places and stuff happening because you write about it when as it happens i do anyway uh, that's why i like things happening to me because you know it's not like a funny thing happened on the way to the gig because mm-hmm. if it does a lot of the time just and you like like when i remember like me missus went down to like live at the apollo because T- tanya lee that like the little person actually was on and they were i think like the john bishop show actually and someone had dropped his phone out of his hand you know on a moped properly like, you know to, and yeah. and paul was going me wife's gone oh, that must be terrible and he went yeah he said but great 10 minutes he got a 10 minutes it was he said it was worth losing my phone because i had this 10 minutes that he didn't have before we can talk about yeah, that such yeah. a good way of looking yeah. at life and, and he was just, just kind of going even though you know losing his phone's a pain in the arse isn't it mm. uh, but he's went, yeah but got a great 10 minutes out of it yeah uh, and that's the thing with especially yourself you've you've managed to get something great from a terrible thing yeah. uh, and that's that obviously losing your phone it's not the same as losing your leg uh, <laughs> oh two we're not going to bring you a new leg are they <laughs> well, your legs in the post um <laughs> uh, you, you can get stuff out of things yeah, that happen no, to you and turn yeah. them around yeah uh, and get something good out of it so. john bishop actually told my story at the um from when i first met john it was in new york we were both on holiday and i saw him and just went up to him and just said you know I, i'm a fan and all i got a photo but thankfully like he just straight away he just went what happened to your leg yeah. and just straight away just said what happened to your leg so we ended up chatting for like 20 minutes and just became mates with him from then really got a few few mutual friends and stuff and then um there's a story about my you know the you'll never walk tattoo yeah. on your leg i've seen that on the tattoo yeah. Pictures, yeah 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 so he told that at the edinburgh fringe i think oh really yeah yeah, yeah. i remember watching that obviously before i knew yeah and we were sitting there going Fucking! Okay, I was telling my mum today. I was saying, "What are you doing tonight?" I said, "I'm doing this thing," and she she she'd actually heard it and stuff. Um, uh, but that's a great like yeah. story. It's mad. But again, it's you could say it's one of those things that's given me a great ten minutes of yeah. comedy type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. You end up going down that route. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but that, I think comedians are quite. They don't really fuck about. Really, they look. Oh, what's going on there? Oh yeah. Oh, straight away, just a massive that, yeah. tumor on the side of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that to be? Uh, but comedians are not, they're not, they're not very tactful. But they're not. They're not being offensive to yeah. say it. Mm. Um, it's a good way to be though really, yeah it, it is yeah and they're not mm. like you know all these people go I just say what I feel and my heart's on my sleeve and don't stuff I feel like you're just rude yeah. you know <laughs> I think they're like, I just say how it is you think you're just a fucking knobhead yeah. you know what I mean you're not like a nice person you're just yeah, yeah, putting yeah. people down not being inquisitive no yeah. uh, but like it means like oh what's going on there you, and they'll, they'll just say it but I think people are quite refreshed they're quite re- totally, you know refreshed yeah. by it when they're just being quite they're not kind of going this is it this is it I think that's what people love the military thing every time we've done stuff especially the injured lads because we all had these horrendous injuries because we were each other all the time it was just all and you know that's fucking that's Jay he's got fucking no legs that's fucking so and so poor he's got one arm he's blind he's fucking burnt he's the, and you're just all together so then when we'd be out at like say events or like black tie dinners and charity dues and stuff and people really don't know what to say and then um, you're just giving each other shit and just but it's that kind of that comfortable and I think people were like it's just I've never known anyone to just speak so openly like this yeah. and just you know people found it shocking that we were just like well, well, that, it's weird when you got like a gang of friends you can just say anything in front yeah. of because I was born in a talk to all my life because all my friends are very mixed uh, race wise and just all shapes and sizes but all we've ever been from like when we were kids is just terrible to each other yeah like racistly yeah you like, think you know, you're so ah, hated ah, each other and you say and we just make racist jokes about each other all the time yeah and then when we, when we went all the years ago all together and we were just being terrible and people kind of going can you say that and you go oh i see you just you know, I, 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 I don't I, I like racist jokes when i'm with me <laughs> mixed race friends yeah, so yeah, yeah, i can yeah. say these things i wouldn't say it to other people but yeah. like i'm that relaxed we were just get each other for anything and again you're in that situation you go we can say that because it's it's not really an issue to us mm. that relaxed with each other yeah mm. that we skip each other for every single thing yeah. you know there's nothing that you can't we had the thing with me when i got blown up i had bad acne when i was a kid but then i got blown up and then <laughs> it's what it's done to his face <laughs> and we fucking like that got blown up and the lads <laughs> would be like yeah his face his face was his worst but but again yeah it's, it's just great to have that again again things where you could fucking be offended by and take offense and and, and be, oh god don't really want anyone mention that when it's pointed out and you're laughing yeah, about it yeah that's the i think it's thing. i think it's a very a uh, it's a healing thing it's just say things you know mm. say things. you know i mean you're not going to say it's, like there's been times i mean i remember arguing with some woman years ago that she was pregnant and she wasn't she was just fat but i <laughs> argued with her to the point of going you're clearly pregnant she's going no i'm not mike so i'm thinking walk away from it now i'm thinking now i'm going to double down on this <laughs> and demand some kind of urine test because you're clearly with child fatty, <laughs> uh, but I remember just even now, I just think back and I think, oh my god, uh, stop it! You know, yeah, it's just yeah. but like, but I have I've pointed things out to people, uh, 
But in you know, in a, like there was a guy with a patch a while ago, and we were, we were joking about like the impact jokes to him and stuff, and like he was saying he's like like a, like a pound on Nick Fury and stuff, and he was he was he was made up with it, you know, he was laughing, you know, he, he, we weren't like yeah. just leaving him out, and it was just it was just everyone, yeah. you know, it yeah. wasn't just like it was just having a laugh, it wasn't being mean. Yeah, well, me, me mate, me mate Fergie, he's been blown up. He's lost both his legs, a couple of fingers, and he's he's got an eye patch. And um, we've been at this dinner, and I was going to see, see him there, lad, no legs. Yeah, he's fucking ugly, him, isn't he? No, just look, he, how fucking ugly is him? Is he over there? I said, you can't say that. Fuck, why can't I? Look at him, he's fucking. And he's like, well, you should have you, you fucking one-legged scouse bastard, whatever. And just fucking hammering me mate. And like people are like, you fucking, he's fucking got no legs. You can't yeah. say. I was like, I've only got fucking one. I'll say what <laughs> yeah, I want to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do what I want. Brilliant. Okay. There's this guy called Chris McCarthy. He's blind. He's been blind for like years. But he does all like like jokes about like obviously being blind and stuff. Uh, but there's a guy a while ago, and there's a guy in the audience who was convinced that he wasn't blind. And his theory was, <laughs> I'm going to go up to him and punch him in the face, and he'll try and stop me. We were doing a gig in Birmingham, and I'm thinking, and the fella, I see the fella going to me, fucking, fucking, fucking wrong, not wrong with him. And then I see him going, I'm thinking, oh my god. And then the fella like trying to get on stage, and it was obviously his theory was, "I'm going to show, I'm going to show this fucker that he's just taking the piss." And he took a swing at him, but only because I was standing inside, I had to like rugby tackle him. And, Fucking uh, hell! Just sitting there going, he's scouted as well. Uh, he, he was blind, and uh, that was his theory was that. I'll just, have, I'll just have a go what a fucking fucked up theory yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, you tell me you better be 100% on this because you know <laughs> if you're wrong and you are very wrong you're going to look like a prize shit oh. uh, and, and he yeah. genuinely I tell you what that would have been good if, he, if, if his theory was correct and he just would have fucking ducked that would, yeah. that would have been impressive blocked it like, like yeah. a, <laughs> a Neo yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck <some. laughs> but I remember yeah. getting thrown out by the doorman and he uh, he missed a few steps, I tell you that for nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So, mate, so what's the um so your gaff then? Are you Yeah, we do the uh, the last house is just in the slaughter house and we do the Philharmonic Hall as well. Uh, but we're there every weekend uh, in the last house, which is in you know, the slaughter house pub with yeah, yeah. in there, yeah. which is a great Yeah, go there a few great, times, a yeah. Great, great boozer, which is one of the like the, the one of the last like, you know, proper like boozers you know. So in a few weeks back so uh, John John O'Con um yeah, they have like singers on. It was okay because we have we have to have the comedy on and stuff, uh, and then we have like music on upstairs afterwards, um, and we have like just like we have like really good acts on. You know, it's a great. Yeah, listen, I'm not just saying this, I mean, Chris and mate, but um, I've I mean, I've seen you, you loads of times. A while ago, mate, yeah. yeah, I've seen yeah. you loads, mate. You fucking, he's, well, I've, I've, you've had me laughing today, mate. But the shows are great as well. You have some great people on. Yeah, I mean, like I mean that. Like you were saying before, like, like taking your missus out and stuff, going on a date, you know, it's a great night out. Yeah, it's right? brilliant. Yeah. Going to like most comedy clubs is a great night out because especially with your missus, you think you haven't, you haven't got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you haven't got to talk <laughs> to so them. True. You can talk about what just happened in yeah. the interval and then, you know, the, the, you know, you yeah. usually finish like 10 o'clock and then you can go out and do whatever you want to do and stuff. So it's, oh, it's get yourself down there, it but you won't be, you won't be disappointed to tell you that. Ah, it's a very, uh, I mean, I mean, Mate, there's a lot going on, yeah, Christmas 2019 as well. But you know what? People people panic. You know when when yeah, like yeah. especially when like the like of August comes and we we've mm. had like Christmas bookings coming in from like February and January because really people try, yeah people try and book for like people just think oh, I'll just phone up the week before and then we Obviously, we sell yeah, out yeah. for like very early and stuff <coughs> and so we've had a lot of people uh, phone up like in like like January February why you know to, to book in for Christmas like big dues and stuff because they couldn't get in uh, ah, so we have people like we keep coming back. Uh, like again and again because it's, it's, it's a really good night out. Mm. But yeah, I think when it gets to about now, because you know, so I think once I'll we'll get gone, booking your works too, then if you want to go and get down yeah, there, get booking it's a good it. Night out, so yeah, my kids need to take you twizzlers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a family business, yeah. So. No, mate, I knew it would be, I mean, hopefully, we'll get you on again, mate. So, yeah, I've, I've loved this, mate. mate. It's, I can see why Joe Rogan gets all the comedians on me because it's, I've definitely not laughed as much. This is all the podcast we've done t- 30 now, have we? 30, yeah. I know I said this is 29, but 29, we recorded yeah. the other ones. So in two. The, well, listen, if you need any more comedians, let me know. I'll, give, I'll put together like a little list of people who yeah. think would be... Oh, nice one. Yeah, it'd be yeah. really good, mate. Yeah, I yeah, really appreciate that, yeah. yeah. No, I've loved like, it, mate. It's been great. Like, especially there's some of the, like, the local lads and stuff. Mm. There's some like really good local talent as well, so... And comedy in Liverpool is, 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 is you know, it's thriving, I think, so... Yeah. Um, Out of the whole North West, do you think, what, what's what's the... Is it Manchester that's kind of the hub, if you like, if... Well, it, it, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I I love Manchester. When I started out, Manchester was so good to me. Uh, mm. uh, once you take like the footy stuff out of it, you know, I've always said this. Manchester Scouts are very similar. Mm, so to say, uh, yeah. very very similar. They might, they might they might hold your nose and say it, but it's <laughs> once you take the football thing out of it, 
man because they've got like a strong identity they don't like any kind of injustice uh, and they like a laugh and they're very close-knit and it's like Glaswegians new Geordie's very similar you know mm. very similar type of people uh, but Manchester's got a great comedy scene and they were like I reckon they were like on the forefront of kind of like alternative comedian like long before you know a lot of cities were uh, but I, I wouldn't have a bad word said about Manchester because when yeah. I started that's what I started like kind of getting paid and <clears> you know getting like you know a lot of the gigs that you know really wanted to get uh, but yeah it's a great place Manchester yeah I, I, went, I went to a comedy club in Leeds when I was at uni there um, it's gone now. The shopping centre's been built over it by Trinity. Oh, okay. I can't remember the name of Leeds it. Leeds is a great place. It's a comedy as well. I've always had yeah, it was, time a, it was a, I remember it was a it was a Monday, Monday night, and it was a pound, yeah. like a pound to get in for it for a student, and it was like three hours, and it was every, every time it was fucking brilliant yeah. for a quid. I love student nights because they're always terrified. <laughs> yeah. Students sitting there, like that. <laughs> they, they don't move. They, they, they sit there with one pint. <laughs> you know, they can't afford to get more like that. Just don't pick on us. Yeah. Like I've done so many like fresher nights and stuff. It's just they're like yeah, that. Yeah. They haven't really lived much. Have they? So they, they just get they just telling anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't shout out because they're terrified of the, the bad man on stage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do quite like uh, doing like student stuff. Yeah, no, it was a really good, really good club. But I yeah. can't remember the name of it. It had uh, it was all it was it was good because uh, and I imagine it's the same with you. But like all those little clubs have you know have seen people who've never done it before. We've got up. Yeah. And they've seen huge names that have just passed by and or we've started well, there. And then, you know, if you, if people always get kind of amazed, really, and they go, oh, my God, you know, you see these people and they go, uh, the amount of people come to me and go, oh, my God, you, you're great, you know, I haven't, I haven't even seen you on the telly. Go, doesn't mean I'm not good. Yeah. You know, they go, I haven't even seen you on these. They all they do, they watch, like, you know, Mock the Weekend, Live the Apollo, and, like, these, like, panel shows and go, well, if you're not on them, you, you want, you're not that good. That's a good point, yeah. You're not on mm. those things. It's just yeah. like... We had a thing, we had a PT, PT on, and he said, like, you know, People are looking for a personal trainer on how many Instagram followers they've got. Yeah. Oh, they've got 50,000 followers. You must be a good personal trainer. Yeah. It's fucking, oh, yeah, you must be dead funny because you've got a million followers. It's yeah. like, because I might no, not even have Twitter. You know, you know, Donald I, Trump's oh, got 60 million followers. Doesn't mean he's a good president. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a dickhead, clearly. <laughs> uh, yeah. But doesn't mean you've got, like, <clears throat> you know, yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. You know, people go, oh, man, and they, and they, and they go that's on. That's and, 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 and they watch, like, you know, like three comedians they've never seen on the telly. And they go, this has been the best. And we've had, yeah, I remember totally. that there was a guy coming down, and he said, we only have you to go to. There was a guy, I think it might have been when John was on, John Bishop mm. was on at the arena, and he couldn't get tickets. So they came to a hot place, and he just said, he went, I only ever had to go to, like, big shows, like the Empire or, like, the like the Echo Arena. Or, and they go, we came here because we had nothing else to do. And he went, this is one of the best nights I've ever had mm. in our, our it was in his missus. And he goes, it's probably the best nights I've ever had. And he goes, I haven't, I haven't seen any of you before. Mm. You know, yeah. and it, it's nice when people <clears> kind of go, you don't have to, just because you're not on the telly yeah. doesn't mean you, you're not, you know, a, yeah, a great, yeah. there's, loads of, there's loads of great comedians who were just kind of untellyable. You know, they just haven't got that telly type thing. You know, that's why yeah, I like, yeah. like, like, like Mach and and stuff. They're <clears> kind of like, I mean, he's a great comedian, but he's very, filmable and affable and you know he, yeah you know you did that kind of like peter k stuff you know everyone can relate to it but there's mm. a, you know so many brilliant comedians who just were not going to be on telly it was just awesome mm. you know? we should have a, a leggy christmas night out there yeah we could actually yeah mm. yeah you could do that yeah give a shout we'll sort it out for yeah yeah definitely so. Mate, it's been really nice to meet you as well. Absolute Thanks so pleasure. much for Absolute yeah, really, yeah, really this, mate. Nice it. one. No worries. And I'll put the link. I'll put the link to um, laughter house, house comedy. Well. Any anything you want to plug? Just laughter house comedy. Really, come down to you know, go go see some live comedy. If you can come to our place, that's even better. But you know, just to support like li li live comedy, really, because it's one of the last you know places where you can just see stuff like unedited, uh, you know, on court and it's actually. You know, just that raw human interaction. Yeah, it is yeah. like properly. It is one of the last few things you can get away with. You know, just sitting in a, in a room, usually a dank, dark cellar <laughs> like half places. Uh, but it's, it's it's a great night out, and you know, if people don't come watch it, it's just it's a great showing off from, <laughs> to an yeah. empty room. <laughs> uh, it's a great escape, mate. I've, again, I'm big enough, but I've, it's, it is a really good night out. Like, yeah, I, again, that's why I like it because you can go with two years. We have people who come on their own, stand at the bar. You know that we, you know, and then we have people who come like you know, fifty people and stag dudes, hen dudes, and stuff. Yeah, and it's yeah. well pleased, and it's it's a nice venue. Mm. It's Get yourselves down there. Yeah, thank you. Right, thanks, thanks so much. Chris. Yeah, yeah, thank you, mate. No I appreciate worries. that. Thanks so much. <laughs>